Hey, peace, peace, peace. Check out the whitest man in Jamaica right here. The Bleaching King. Check him out. Cool like the ice in the freezer. Look good. No filter. I don't want to not compare me to my favorite artist, you know. I mean, the whitest thing in Jamaica. No eye water, no intense. Only man can compare Michael Jackson. He's not even there. So nobody not ready. Uno boy boy, uno niggas. A them skin tone and make a girl just jump. Remember that. Mom, don't stay. White than the white is. School, no man. I out, we out there, no man. No cap. Outside with them. Out, man. Regular basic. You know the moms them have to keep cool like the ice in the freezer. Look good. No filter. I don't want to not compare me to my favorite artist. You know. Yep. That's my Jamaican, that's my Jamaican, Jamaican, Jamaican. That's my Jamaicans right there. All right. I got my biblical DNA coming here. And I got, of course, thunder in the building. And we're going to have some fun today. We're going to talk about these topics. Um... We're going to have some fun. <laughs> Sterling G, peace and love to you, man. Cheer the show, like the show. Matter of fact, let me post the show on Facebook. I ain't even going on Facebook and post the show yet. <clears throat> um, Where's the show at? Where's the... Where's the... um. So what's popping, people? Well, no, the flat is the flat earther is what happened. A bad day for flat earth, huh? I should put that. I should have put that into. This, this is fake. This can't. It can't be real. It can't be real. It's a bad. It's a bad day for flat earthers, man. Copy link. Let me send it to Facebook. So how's everybody doing, man? How's everybody? How's the family? My son, my nine-year-old, he called me. He's like, you know, dad, it's going to be a eclipse today. And I said, have fun. That's all I could say is have fun. Let me hear how you sound, biblical DNA. Let me hear how you sound. How you sound? No, no, no. Oh, no, man. You don't sound right, bro. No, man. Gotta fix that, Papa. Let me come back on my phone. All right, shout out to everybody that's supporting the channel and what we doing. And last week, we gotta add that mixture, man. We talked about the person's DNA and the, the Whit Whitney um, I, I, um, the Whitney predictor. And what compared to what people have today i want to give you my dna biblical dna so that you could put it in the, the same one that they use you yo peace ah man dude. there you go there you go there you go hopefully i could be able to share them on my on computer though so all right cool hey what is the name of the, uh, the predictor that they use for the E one B one A um for um Ramesses the third? What do they call it? It's called Wit Athes Haplogroup Predictor. Wit Athes Haplogroup Predictor. So I want mm. you to put my DNA in there. I want to see what it reads me as because you you alerted me to something that was kind of crazy. You trying to click in again? I see another profile. Coming. Yeah, can I get do both or because I can't share on my phone i gotta share on my computer that's there fine that's fine i could mute it up and then um you could do what you need to do okay. yeah man. what's up james what's on your mind brother yeah what's good how y'all doing man peace doing yeah I had a, so i was looking up into some uh some like uh east african stuff with the nylotes and everything like that hold on now, before you get into that mm -hmm. the, the person's who show it is he just came on what's so good thunder give him his respect so it's the show why are you in the dark today 
the eclipse got you it got you man are you in the rapture right now sir <laughs> are you in the rapture sir i just want to make sure you're not in the rapture you know what i'm saying Yo, I'm my trolling. Bad, my bad, bro. My bad. I was trolling all day today. I was trolling. Why? Is whoever, that? whoever never hated me, they hate me now. Cause I'm the troll of the year during times like these. We have eclipses and all this stuff. This is um Damon Richardson. His post, I call it the post of the day. He said, "Is anybody else left behind with me?" <laughs> That's a troll post. Then I then I put this up. Um, I approve this message. 100%. The mothership is coming. Don't hate. If you're giving away property, hit my inbox. So are you ready for the raptor? Jesus is coming on April 8th, 2024. Then I said, did he get a day off from the media? It's all about the eclipse. End of the end of the world talk. Yeah. So I was trolling. I was on my troll game all day today. You know? And um, I want to say we troll idiots. That's what we do. You know, Howard Campin, I, I was dealing with this girl when Howard Campin um, was talking about the world and then her brother sold all his stuff. Said the world is coming to an end. That's crazy, yo. Yo, a lot of Caribbeans be listening to Harold Campin when he was still alive. My mom listened to Harold Campin, but she was a seven day Adventist. Ain't that what they, ain't what that what he was? Hold on, what happened? What happened with Pastor Betty and Shaka? What happened? Oh. What? Pastor Ben and Ashaka, what happened? Were they debating or something? All right. No, I ain't heard about that. What's on your mind today, Thunder? What you want to talk about? I got my stuff I want to talk about. No, nah, I mean, y'all doing the Hebrew stuff. I'm letting y'all rock. Do you think? Hey, Tennessee reparations. Dig that up. I want me and you to argue about that later in the show. I don't know if you know what happened. <laughs> Sean is fault. I told him that's his folks. What they say? Corporations, I think they say they declined the 2.9 billion or something that they want to good. put it. To. Ah, there you go. Good, that's real good. Rep Tennessee reparations. reparations. It's huge right now. It's huge right now. People talk. build a ban slavery reparation draws opposition. Oh, okay. So they're trying to fight it. Mm. Um, biblical DNA. Where would I find my YSTRs? Which 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 one of them? Would it be um? 23 and me, which one? Now, nah, if you're on a project on Family Tree DNA, they should have your YSDRs. Um, if you want, you can text me your um, a project that you're in, and I can get it real fast for you. I can get the YSDRs for Listen, you real man, fast. You're not gonna be doing this. Listen, God, you gotta make up your mind. <laughs> are we going to discredit DNA like you did last week, or are we going to give it credence? Which one? Right, going to do? Wait a minute now. Discredit. Hold on a second. I'm gonna make a point to him right now. All right. So what happened is, last week he didn't get to tell everybody this, but there's somebody in the Dagger Squad who has a certain reading with their DNA. Right. Watch this thunder. All right. They put them in that same system predictor, and the person came up as a I marker. <laughs> up on the haplogroup group I. So shouldn't that tell you there's something wrong? With that predictor that talked about, you see, if I'm if I'm if I'm B, right? So my haplogroup group is B, and I go in the wit athes predictor, and it says I'm I or G. Something is wrong with the wit athe. So that's what happened when it read Ramesses the third as E one B one A. This that's is what what I it's I a say. bad it's a bad system. The system is bad. It's broken. It's so not a perfect system. That's what I was saying. Right. It no, it, no, perfect. no. It's not a system. Any nobody should use it. It's just that I'm I'm supporting them re redoing the R1B reading for for the 18th dynasty too. How could the R? How could the 18th dynasty be all European? That's crazy. I don't believe that. You believe that? I don't believe the 18th that. Dynasty of what? Egypt? Yeah. All of them have European markers. The men and the women, except one. I think one of them is G. I don't believe that. So they're going to do that over two. And they're going to do um the one in um the Ramesses, the third one. They're going to do that over also. They need to do all of them over. You got to be sure when you're putting stuff out. Because I'm saying 23andMe is selling kits based off of that. And that's whack. That's, ter that's horrible. 
Now, if you're telling them to to get a better system or 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 tweak the system that they already, that's one thing. But to, that ain't what you were doing last week. You were you were you were bringing all, 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 all the people who do it, who did it, is saying that. The people who actually did the did the testing is saying that. So I can't repeat what the, the expert says. He showed it. He showed the, the, the interaction between him and um Yazia God, mm-hmm. the guy who did it. So who you who whose word should we take, Thunder? A regular dude on the corner? <laughs> Garfield's word? No. The saying, guy who did it. The guy who did it. Let me repeat what I'm saying because maybe you I don't understand. The, the wit at the predictor that they use for Ramesses the third. They, we have somebody in the Dagger Squad who is a certain haplogroup. When they put it in the wit athy predictor, they come up with a whole different haplogroup I. That alone should warn people we can't trust this. And I can't trust the R1B either with, 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 with the dynasty, 18th dynasty. I don't believe they're all Europeans. I don't think it goes back. But if it comes back tested now with the technology that we have, the R1B, we just got to live with it. If Ramesses the third come back E1B1A now, we got to live with it. But right now, there's an X asterisk <laughs> beside it. You know what I'm saying? There's an asterisk beside it. But go ahead. Say what you got to say. What I'm saying is those people. All right. Let's, let's, okay, let's do this. You, I just think you need to die on a hill that is worth dying on. That's all I'm saying. And mm-hmm. I'm think I'm saying you're going to take yourself out. You're going to shoot yourself in the foot. On something that may not you may it, okay, what is it called uh, uh unintended consequences, right? So I think you need to kind of let's just work it, let's just let's just you know see how this goes. You know what I'm saying? If even if they do rework it, right? They 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 tweak the system, okay. We went to, that's what science is all about. Science is not perfect, it's it's, uh, it's constantly improving itself. So I, I say. Let's let, let, <clears throat> let it improve itself first, mm-hmm. and, and not. I just uh, what you say, biblical DNA. Maybe I'm tripping. Nah, you're right. Peace, Thunder. How you doing? You doing good? I'm good, man. You good? Yeah, I'm, I I survived the doomsday today, so I'm I'm doing just fine. Why Why are you Why are y'all doing? This is the first I'm hearing about this. Right? <laughs> what, what are y'all doing today? This is just a minor eclipse. Yeah, you're not, you're yeah. not all religious though. You are dude that believe in God, and you yeah, rock with, but you rock with your stuff. I'm not sure the Bible, the rapture and the eclipse. I don't know if those two. Let's look that up. I don't know. I don't know if that's a. I don't know if that those two things go together. <laughs> Are y'all talking about the the second coming? Did, did it say it's supposed to be an eclipse during the second coming? No, I don't really say that. Yeah, I don't think so. And also, the rapture is a interpretation. It's not even clearly defined in the Bible. So, uh, yeah, they got those three heifers ready, ready to um. Yeah, the red heifers. Yeah, yeah, yeah they they trying to they trying to do that. They trying to do animal sacrifices. We, yeah. Actually, I think I, saw, I did see something about them red hell. Uh, mm-hmm. Was it last week? Oh, it's been they've been they've been talking about it for a while. I think since twenty twenty two, they got them from Texas. Three red heifers from Texas, and they, they were mad that they imported them into Israel. But it's supposed to be born in Israel, right? It ain't supposed to come from nowhere else. Hey, Newsweek, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Red cows, Gaza, and the end of the world. So yeah, that that was that was four days ago. Yeah, I I, I just heard. Oh, the red help is being sacrificed. This is on YouTube. This was three weeks ago. Yeah, I knew I had just I just said I just heard something about that. Yeah, yeah, the red cows from Texas. Yeah, that was last week, right? That was I mean, I'm sorry, that was last month. That was March the fifth. Mm-hmm. But so, yeah, I agree with you. Like it, what I seen is like a lot of people that are religious. Um, specifically Christians, they've been coming out saying, you know, today's going to be a big day and whatnot, and that, you know, the coming of the Messiah and whatnot is the, you know, the signs and wonders of the sky. Nah. I don't think an eclipse got nothing to do with that one. It's going. It's a lot of stuff got to happen for that. I think before, yeah, before the end times, it's, it's a several, it's several things that lead up to that, in, biblically anyway. 
and I don't think we're close to it. Nah. Well, they always think the end times is coming during something like weird in the sky or some type of astronomical event. They they always been doing that. Uh, I don't think it's been, it was cool. I, I watched it. I was at um at work, man, and, kind and of it's going to happen again. <laughs> yeah, I think set what's uh, fifteen years, 10, 15 years from now, it's supposed to happen again. Yeah, there so. you go. Anyway, y'all do your thing, man. What we got? Garfield, you you still trying to get your YSTRs, or you want me to explain the situation? Hey, you can explain this because I don't really understand. Yeah, I don't know what you. Yeah, yeah I don't even oh. know the basis of DNA. All right, here. So this is all the mtDNA um, samples that was found in that 2017 ancient Egyptian mummy genome suggests an increase of Sub-Saharan African ancestry in post-Roman periods. And what you see in the first two samples right there are L3. Uh, this is mitochondrial, right? Mm hmm. Yes, okay, that's sir. What I thought. Okay, because y'all was mm -hmm. talking about why paternal, and that's why I was confused because I see MT right there, and it's like, that's the mother. Yeah, so yeah. what Garfield wants me to do, um, that, like he said, there's a brother on Dagger Squad that has a specific capital group. He belongs to, you want me to say what he belongs to on Garfield or no? I don't know where Garfield is at. Yeah, I don't know where he at. Well, he belongs to an like an African haplogroup group that's not available on Wit at this haplogroup group predictor. And so what it did is it calculated a European haplogroup group for him, if that makes sense. Mm. So that's what what you would call like a biased or prejudice. That's because that's prejudice. Like how he belongs to a, a African. A dominant haplogroup group that's found in Africa, but they're giving them another haplogroup group that's found in Europe. Yeah, so I guess that does throw a little monkey a monkey wrench in there, right? But I'm sure that's easily fixable. Hopefully. Oh yeah, yeah. If if he were to fix his um his data sets, like all the available data that's available since 2012, if he were to take all the available data, the statistics would change where, and also he needs to implement an error. So if there's an error in the STRs, it would automatically, um, you know, catch it. It would, you know, say, hey, you know, there's an error or something like that that's caught in the STRs. Now, is he in the, well, would he be like in the L groups or is there another group that's not L? that he would be a part of. Who you talking about? The individual? Yeah, the individual. You ain't gotta say his name or nothing like that. Um he now nah, he belongs to A. Wait, so it is a mitochondrial DNA? A it's group? A, no, it's Y was... it's Y DNA. He belongs to um A M thirteen, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, that's pretty early. That's a lot. Mm. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Right. And so basically what it came out if it came out as I believe it was I one or I two Give me a second. That's weird because everybody comes out of A double zero, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what they said we originally came from was A double zero. That's where like Denisovans, Neanderthals, all the ancient, you know. Right. Yeah, it said he belongs. So he belongs to A dash M13 on Nevgen, but on um on we're at these haplogroup group predictor, it predicted him as I2A. And the eyes, that's usually the Germans, right? Yeah, exactly. Like they were Neolithic, like Europeans. They've been there for a long time. But I don't know where Garfield's at. I don't know. He wanted me to do something. I don't know what he wanted me yeah, to do. Yeah, that's that's well into Europe. <laughs> yeah, that's like the Soltrians. Well, um, who that King J? Peace, up, King peace, J? peace, thunder. Peace, Ob Bagibo, Bagido, Bagibo. What's up, Ob? Hey, what's going on, brother? Y'all got something to say? 
Oh, no, I'm just chiming in. Really, I'm just, uh, I mean, I'm just listening in on the conversation. I, uh, I, I'm i just trying to learn, you know what I mean? Uh, I, if I had anything, if I have anything to input, though, I'll definitely chime in, though. I just, I'm learning all this stuff right now. I really ain't never really uh, heard of this uh, biblical, uh, tracing of biblical DNA and stuff like that. Well, man, number one, thank you for joining us, bro. And um, you can jump on anytime, man, and chime in. Anytime. This is a free zone. No, we don't want to hold nothing against nobody. You're free to speak. You're, whatever you're going to speak. But if you speak anything that can't be verified, then we're going to actually have to get a source. But if you're going to be regular talk, we don't really matter. It don't really matter. DNA, um, uh, Bill Good DNA has some to, he asked you about, do you want to present him, present something? He want to get you okay. permission. Okay, because. I, well, I do kind of do have a question though, because um. Hold on one second, so, beloved. Obi, oh, hold, wait, hold wait. one second. Biblical DNA. I was on the phone. What what were you trying to ask, brother? Now you want me to um put the YSCRs? You told me your YSCRs. Yeah, but I don't have them. Yeah, it's on Family Tree DNA. I don't have Family Tree DNA. I don't have the, a login for that. What I have is um my heritage. Um, I have, and I have um. Um, African ancestry. I have African. I have um, ancestry.com, 23andMe. I got you. This is what I'm going to do. I got an idea. What I'm going to do is um, I'm gonna, going to do somebody that's from Africa that belongs mm -hmm. to Haplogroup Group 8, and I'm going to run it through um, with at these Haplogroup Group predictors so they All can right. see, so the audience can see what you're talking about. So, so ladies and gentlemen, th this is what's going to happen, right? We know someone what their marker is, right? And we're going to put it in with Athis. And somebody made a great comment earlier too. They said right here. He said, this is it. It's not easily fixable. With Athi hasn't been updated since 2012. It's old news by now. So Cripmac, very good comment. I don't know if that's the real Cripmac, by the way. Shout out to him. <laughs> if that's him, shout out to him. But I don't know if that's him. But he made a very smart comment. And I had to put it on the screen. Shout out to Crip Mac if that's him. Shout out to Mr. 707. And by the way, this Thursday, I might be doing a show on Clubhouse called Is the Biblical Patriot? Are the Biblical Patriots real people? And where do we go from here? All oh, right. he's not getting his Carter G. Woodson source. Hey, hey, listen, man. Shaka almost can do a, he do a little research, something, something. But he ain't he ain't the, he ain't the best though. We got better people out there. Than nah, that. you can't do shock. Shock ain't the best, but he ain't chopped. He ain't chopped. He ain't chopped chop, chop liver. I'm never. No, I'm not gonna say that. To me, in all our interactions, he's been wrong all the time. So, <laughs> all the time. All the time. <laughs> oh come on, man. All right, so. What I'm doing is I'm selecting the YSTRs. This is what I was talking about, Garfield. So you, you uh, can look, see. Look at it. Look at it, family. So you can do it in the future. Which which one? Which one? Highlight the one that you're doing. Which one is so, it? Which side? This one, Ethiopia. Okay. So the person is Waldekiros, and they are AM32. So you put them in Whitney predictor, and what happened? All right. So this is the first step. When you're um going through it, you what you want to do the easiest way is you're just gonna run it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna run it through a Google search or whatever. And what this is gonna do is gonna clear all the um the spaces. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All the little spaces because you see how it was before. It was a lot of spaces, but watch now. You see that? You want to clear all of that out. And them little dashes too. You're gonna clear those out too. You're gonna put a space, and down here you're gonna put space. So clear out all, all those little dashes. All right, you see, we cleared out all those those um dashes and any other thing that would stop it. We're gonna put it as equal priors up here mm -hmm. and submit it. And see, he belonged to um what is was it, A dash M32. 
and he comes up as I2A. So hold on a second. So so A, what is explain to the people what A is? You, you're not gonna find this on anybody's channel. Mm -hmm. Nobody on YouTube does what biblical DNA. He's Ngozi, but he's actually showing you what Ngozi talk about. <laughs> Cause Ngozi talk about this stuff all the time. Shout out to Ngozi, by the way, Mr. Yeah. E1B1A himself. Right. All right. So if so anybody, what is, uh, so what, what you to? go ahead, go um for for those that want an uh, easy way to break down, I highly recommend downloading a AI chat GBT or anything. This it makes it so much so easy. This is a breakdown of Haplogroup Group A. All I had to do was search Haplogroup Group A, and it broke it down. Haplogroup Group A is found most often in African men, particularly those peoples who have maintained indigenous lifestyles. It provides insights into the genetic history and migrations of human populations originating in Africa. Look at there. Yeah, and what does it show? For somebody that, you know, indigenous to Africa is giving them a European haplogroup. Very yeah. important. I hear that thunder? I hear it. So the dude is indigenous to Africa. A, what is A? The first letter of the alphabet. So mm -hmm. A, the original people. So now the marker is now giving you, when you put it in the with Athens predictor, it's making you what? A European. Is doesn't doesn't that signal to you, Thunder, that there's a problem? So I'm gonna let him put mine in there too, because I'm an E guy. I'm this E guy talking about I'm from E1B when I am from Western Central Africa. Let's see what it says when I put my stuff in there. So next week, if my brother has time, he could come on every week and we could talk DNA. Cause the people like DNA, they like talking about it. It's intriguing. It well, go ahead, my brother. Continue. You've made your point. Go ahead, Thunder. You have any pushback? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Good no, no. Can I can I ask a question to the brother uh, Garfield? Yeah, of course, King J. Of course. Um, so oh, you have to do KJ, by the way, because you're King J. So no. yeah, <laughs> so, so it's, it's in regards. It's the RT RTB group. RTB, what's group. That? Uh, it's a group, half a group that's um is in the middle of Africa, so it's like dead and dead. Okay. Dead. You mean R one B? You mean yeah, R one B. But we also see that in European, correct? As a no, European. it's not the same. It's not the same um, subclass. Subclass. Okay. It's, this, it's a different subclass. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you see this? Look at this. This is how easy check this this whole I A I is. Look at this. Just broke it down for you. Haplogroup R-V88 is a paternal genetic marker that is associated with the spread of Chadic languages across parts of North Africa. Genetic studies suggest that this haplogroup arose during the early to mid Holocene per, um, period and indicates an ancient trans-Saharan connections in the expansion of Chadic uh, speaking populations. The genetic history of Chad reveals a complex mix of ancestral lineages including Northern African ancestry linked to the R1B-V88 haplogroup. This highlights the role of trans-Saharan migrations and cultural ex exchanges that influence the genetic landscape of Chad and surrounding regions. All right, the spread of Chadic languages, the distrib uh, distribution of the R-V88 haplogroup is closely associated with the spread of Chadic languages which are spoken by ethnic groups across parts of North Africa. This genetic evidence suggests that the expansion of Chadic language or speaking population was associated or was, um, what is that, facilitated? Yeah, by ancient trans-Saharan migrations and interactions. Now it's interesting because um, I, I told Garfield, I text him late, I think it was Friday night, and the samples for the new ancient Egyptian samples came out. Woo! They, Hold on. And, and majority. Go go <laughs> Drop Drop roll. Let me and majority. <laughs> this is fresh off the boat. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody talking about this right now. Ain't nobody got yeah. this. Go ahead, brother. Break it down. Yeah, majority of majority of them came out as R Apple Group R1B. That's all I'm gonna say. Like, I don't know oh, if it's 
dude. Cause the, the, I don't know if it's dude. Cause, cause, <laughs> a conspiracy. How are they going to have these? Are, this is what, what time period were these guys? What time period? Yeah, give me a second. Let me click on the. Oh, man. So they have a new report that came out. And these people are showing us R1B. So I, this, say <laughs> it's a conspiracy. I say they're trying to make the year. I say they're trying to make the Egyptians Europeans. That's what I say. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to trick us. It's trick it is, it's slow. They're slow rolling it too. They're just, just slowly but surely. Yep. Wait, but about to be real, R1B is Central Asian. So oh, right. Yes, yes, so, it is. Originally, this is so, more of so, a European subclad later years because it goes back to like 40, 50,000 years ago. And by the time 20,000 years ago, that's what most Europeans were because they were coming back, back migrating back to where this, the Middle East is. So mm. they, they all fall down to West Asia and Southern Europe and Europe on a whole. And even I, <laughs> I don't know, somebody going to say Garfield is I. They must have lost their mind because almost <laughs> every European culture got I. That's crazy. Yep. It's mostly concentrated with the Vikings. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And that's the source right there. Oh man. Genetic um predisposition. Um predisposition of yeah. atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in ancient human remains. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is sad. And so what happened was um geneticists you know, data scientists, people that know how to do this stuff, they took those S and P's that was published and they, um, there's a process that you have to run it to. You have to run the files, the BAM files, the fast on um, cube files, and they were able to find the Y's for these samples. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So this one is a pre-diagnostic. So for those saying, oh, these are later. No, this is pre-diagnostic. So Europeans were in pre-dynastic Egypt. Now the, that's when, that's when, just crazy, right there. It, it was says, dark in Europeans, though. You gotta say they're dark skin. You can't say light skin. <laughs> you gotta say they're dark skin. <laughs> hey, you know it's funny. And Goldie used to talk about the people migrating from like the Zangros Mountains, the, the Iranian plateau areas, right? And they had mm -hmm. blue eyes. This mm -hmm. was like four thousand years ago, right? Or five five thousand years ago. So those people, more than likely, they had light skin or they were fear, fear skin, and they migrated to the Levant. A lot of people migrated to the Levant with that with that complexion and those blue eyes, you know, but um, mm -hmm. it's sad, man. So Thunder, you're not an Egyptian, bro. I'm sorry to break your heart. You're not an Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to be affiliated with them people in the first place. King J, you got another question, bro? Yeah, I do. So, so, so the map, the map that I'm looking at here, it has um, R1B as a, a chatic haplogroup, and mm -hmm. then we have the E1B1, one B1, one E1 B1 B1 as a Cushotic uh, haplogroup. So, so, so basically, what he just said was that the the uh, uh, Egyptians, like the Badarian groups, were are are um, chatic haplogroups. Yeah, you have to you have to be very careful when you say Cushetic because it's not the same Kush as in the Bible, and it's just the same thing that they use the word Semitic. It's not the Shem in the Bible. Well, well, I'm, not, I'm not talking biblically. Okay. So okay. Cool. The map of those geograph geographical maps. Yeah. So I'm talking like um, so we see A3 is Nilotic, Nil Nil right? Mm -hmm. We're all but those areas. So I'm looking at the map, and they're all showing. The geographical locations of the haplogroups. So, like we see J1, the map where I'm looking at, like J1 would be what the Egyptians, ancient Egyptian, Bagrarian haplogroups would, would be. Like J says, it looks green, J1. Are you familiar with somebody, J1? Somebody would have J1. That's what a lot of Israelites have. Uh -huh. J1, J2, and um, you see, like, a, um, what's the other marker you have in, in ancient Near East? You have a couple of markers too, but. And, and that's the now T. delta. That seems to be the now delta haplogroup J one. No, it wouldn't be just one group, but you're gonna see you're gonna see some people with that connection there. Definitely, definitely. Okay, correct. for sure, for sure, for sure. Definitely correct. 
Israel Baum, peace and love. You know, you know my platform already allow everybody to talk and speak their mind. Go ahead, my brother. Peace and love to you, my brother. All right. First things first, your connection is not correct. I don't know what's going on. Your connection, you're chippy. You're chippy. No. We could hear you, but you're chippy. Gary Barrick, what up? What up? What up? Maybe you need to go out and come back in, beloved. I don't know what's wrong with your connection. Not that we, we don't want to hear you, but <laughs> um, but um, your your connection not right. Shout out to Lamar Pope in the building. Peace and love to you. Um, what about I two thirty seven Hapla Group paternal side? I two thirty seven. I I two thirty seven would be um you're European. You're European. That's a European marker. That's a European marker. And what happened is um. The matter of fact, Sister Mika had a PBS thing on her timeline on on um on Instagram, and where she was playing somebody from PBS, and the guy was breaking down DNA about how they they track the people from this from the slave trade to here, and it's, uh, and then when they find out that they have European DNA in you, how you know it relates, and the guy who was doing a documentary, he's white, and he's like, yeah, I have some African DNA, and it's from my forefathers sleeping with um whatever you know what i'm saying what's up 93 peace and love to you brother you know so that's something that we need to definitely think about on both sides that europeans mix with african women and have children and those children what happened to them i didn't know isaiah hartenstein that played for the knicks was black <laughs> i didn't know he was black yeah y'all say he black then i'm white his father is black bro Bro, I don't believe he bought. I don't believe that's that's biological. His father, you don't think that's biological? His father, uh, right? That dude is up. He is a European. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, man, facts. Nah, bro, he is his father, no doubt. Not biologically. You don't think he's biological? His father, let's look it up. Nah, let's look up Isaiah Hardesty. Well, even if he is he, genetically, he might be more European. That happens. No, nah, genetically, he all European. They say he's a German American. <laughs> German American. <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I, I, think I, need, I think I need to bow out before I even start this conversation. Let, let me, me see let myself. Me, let's let's do this. Y'all look at this guy. Oh, look what Crip Mac wrote. Yeah. Crip Mac might be onto something here. Nah, he looks just like his father, but his father mixed. Yeah, because when I saw that dude, I'm like, that dude is um, he looked like his father. That's the same thing. He's tall. His father is mad tall, but he has his mom's complexion. That's what it is. Show me. Or a if your dad ricks, then he white. Show me a DNA. He's seventy five percent white. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Born in Eugene, Oregon, Hartenstein's father is Florian Hartenstein. He's a Jamaican German American basketball coach and former professional basketball player of mixed African American heritage. Isaiah's mother is a white American. His parents met in the United States when his father attended and played for the University of Oregon. In 2008, Hartenstein and his family moved to Germany, where his father was playing professionally. So, yeah, he's mixed. His, his dad is mixed. But if you look at his dad, you could tell that his dad is... is <laughs> cream, man. No, but that's still white, though, because he's 75%. <laughs> Share my screen. Not fighting with you, bro. Look at that's his father. That's a white man. That's a white man. Ain't nothing black about well, his this. His father, his father, his father is black, though. It don't look look at this. One this drop is the one you need to watch. This is the one right here. That's <laughs> the one. Don't, don't they got a brother? Don't they got a, a, a rapper who was like that too? Uh, Bro, I think Pat, your boy, that Pat, what the boy, uh, Pat Mahomes. Either say my whole father was black. His father is supposed to be black. Is, that's where mm -hmm. I disagree with the, the Hebrew Israelites. I do I got I got mm -hmm. you at this point, bro. Yep. Because yeah. you're telling me that that's disrespectful to our ancestors. Yeah, you telling me that's yeah. a black hey, man. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. I'm it sorry, don't matter I mean, if you identify as black. Like, that's disrespectful to our ancestors. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on, guys. Is that Israel bound? Yes, sir. Go ahead, beloved. You clear now. Go so, ahead. I, I wanted to, I wanted to interject there because I'm 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 not to disagree because I'm with you a thousand percent. If y'all are speaking to 
um, the I Hebrew Israelites that claim, say, for instance, the Mexicans are Israelites? Is that what y'all speaking on? I'm speaking on you are what your father is. And I'm telling you, I will, I refuse to acknowledge this guy here as a black man. Period. Facts. Hey, so, so, so who, uh, most Israelites believe that you are what your father is. What are you talking about? I just said, I just said that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, brother. Yeah, so, I, so, I disagree with the Hebrew. That's why I disagree with them, at, at them saying that you are what your father is. Because that hold I'm on, wait. Okay, so, so, okay, so, so, yeah. So, all right. So, we do disagree. <coughs> why don't you believe that you are what your father is? No. Are you telling me this is a black man? Hell no. I'm saying that you are what your father is. Okay, this guy's father is black. Is he black? Yeah, he's he what else can he be? I'm asking you a question. His his father is black. Are you telling me this guy here is black? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. So yeah, we'll we we'll just disagree. I'm not saying debate. So, hey, so, so what like, so you so that, you that, are with that, your father. But that show you, hold on a second. second. Hold on a second. Okay. But this okay. shows us how stupid we have fell into the trap no, of white supremacy. Yeah, that's true. Okay, hold on. That's this is what true. I'm saying, Thunder, because that's I agree not, with you. This is why, this why the racialized terms screw us up. Of course. All we got to say I, is that he was, he was light skin. This dude is light skin. That's all we need to say. He's not it's light skin. Like, this is why the Egyptian and Israelite and the Moorish argument is so crazy because you have people who were light skin like this guy who was considered to be Egyptians, Israelites, Hebrew, uh, Moors. They had light skinned people in every single culture. But because we're so racialized in this part of the world, we anybody who's light skinned, oh, he's white. Yeah, he's mixed. Yeah. He's mixed. He even, he even he's said not mixed, man. He's when I heard his mixed. story, though, when I heard his story on um roommates with J Jalen Brunson and um Brunson and um, um Hart show they, they have called roommates, and it's like, yo, he's a he's 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 a black man, he's light skinned. So it's crazy. So can I ask the brother? I'm sorry. Can I ask the brother a question? Yeah. So, 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 are you saying Hold that? Time people... out. Time out. Time out. I don't know why you're echoing. Everybody echoing. Mute except the speaker. No, Everybody mute ahead. except Come the on. speaker. What you got? Go ahead, brother. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Come on. Okay. So, so what I'm asking is, do you believe that if a if if a if a a straight black man has a white wife, let's say, and he, and then he has a child with that white woman. I, I mean, I don't argue with a person if they want to say if it's a mixed race baby. But at the end of the day, you I, I can't believe anything other than you are what your father is. So you don't believe that uh, Patrick Mahomes' daddy is black, and that that don't make him black too. Okay, let me. Okay, so, like, so question yeah. to the brother right the there. Last thing I'm gonna do is debate anybody on this. I just matter. asked the question, brother. Don't gotta be a debate. I, I got you. That is a personal opinion that I have, right? So, if okay. you, you I'm, I'm gonna allow you to have yours, allow me to have mine. No I refuse doubt. to acknowledge this guy as a black man. I don't That's care what that, your that, beliefs that, that. are. I'm no, not no problem, no problem right. brother. I, you know what I'm saying? That's just like you. That's like saying that a baby had uh, somebody have an albino baby and it's not black. So I mean, it's, it's, there's no logic in it. So fair enough. Same same thing. Thing. Albino, fair enough. Same as this hey, guy. You, 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 you drew your line in the sand and you, you said believe, that that's your opinion. You you're not backing down that from that it. Albino is the same <laughs> as this guy right here. But my his skin is disingenuous. Brother, it's not about skin color. It's really about like his facial structure. It's about everything. I mean, oh, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, time out. Everybody look at his father. This is his father right here. I saw right. his father. All right, he looked like a mulatto. Now his father. I'm looking at his father right here. His father yeah. on the screen. Look. His father, look, you know who his father looked like? Who a mulatto. The Nick Sanders got traded. Um, What's that guy, the three-point guy? What's his name? That used to play for the Knicks. He got traded to Detroit. What's his name? Um... Obi Toppin? Nah, not Obi Toppin. Um, it don't matter, man. No, no, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to make a point because it's fun. So he's a far right and that's equal. <laughs> hey, a question real quick to the brother that's to the brother that's asking the question of Thunder. What would he say about Bob Marley? Is Bob Marley black or Bob, Bob Marley? Marley's white? A, his daddy's white. Yeah. So, so, so Bob Marley's a white man. 
What what can he be? How can a black a white man have a black baby? <laughs> I, I agree with you. So hold on a second. Garfield. So hold on a second. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So Bob Marley's father is white, right? And his mother is dark skinned black. So because don't matter. He, don't matter. So oh, so you going by who the father is, right? Yeah, okay. because it's because that's that man. Michael, Michael Jackson. You think Michael Jackson is black? Absolutely, Michael Jackson. Both Michael Jackson's parents. Watch this, watch, are black. This, watch, this, watch this, watch this. You know that Michael Jackson's R. You know how he got the R mm -hmm. because a slave master slept with his great 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 grandmother and had his right. great great grandfather. Hold on, hold on, hold on. His great great grandfather and his grandfather had another child. Oh. And he had Joe, and then now the R is still carried down in his system. So he has R one B based off of the slave master. You know, so he what? would not be considered. Hold on, Thunder. One second, Thunder. He would be considered white. The same white. thing with Muhammad Ali. Right. Muhammad Ali right. got R, and, mm -hmm. and what's his name? Martin Luther King got King. R, and mm -hmm. Garvey got R. So they all, all those famous black people we running around claiming, and, and we joke about, they got white fathers in the lineage. Right. So all those people now, we're going to call them white based on your theology. You know what? I'm going to do mean, this right here. Now. Mm -hmm. Once again, a white man cannot have a black baby. Uh, who said that? Who said it can? Who made that rule up? Where, I'm saying what what in his what in his body ejects from him and says there's going to be a black baby born. He having sex with a black woman. That's enough. Okay, so 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 what does that? So his seed is not the pro, his. The, so so you yes, telling me his that his seed, seed? His seed. Hold on a second. You see, this is craziness now. I'm saying no, to you, beloved, beloved, beloved. I'm saying to you. It's silly. I'm saying I mean, that Hartenstein, hold on. The reason why I brought up Hartenstein is really for us to look at ourselves and how stupid we've been all this time and why racialized terms and definitions, we're still using segregation definitions for us today to classify us. So when they said the one drop rule, remember the story that I did on um, this story right here. Let me share my screen one second, family. I'm gonna show y'all show y'all a video real quick. Hold on one second. And you know I'm hey. finna I'm finna when you finish, I got some for y'all now. If y'all gonna say that man white, I mean he gonna if he black, I got somebody really for y'all. How we know his dad not the son of a white man too? How we know that uh, Isaiah Harford ain't uh, R one B? Hold on one second, brother. Hold on one second. Let me share the screen real quick. I'm saying it. Hey, shout out to Enya. Shout out to Enyami, by the way, man. I ain't talked to you in a while, beloved. Look at this right here. Remember when I did this during Black History Month? We was talking about different people and their struggles during the slave trade, right? You remember this video right here? Wife passed as a slave master, and she used that for the husband. Look at how light skinned she was. That's how they escaped slavery. Look at this. Ellen and William Craft, both born in the 1820s, both abolitionists born into slavery in Macon, Georgia. In December 1848, they escaped to the northern parts of the United States by traveling by train and steamboat, ending up in the northern parts of the United States in Philadelphia. They achieved this by doing something very odd. Ellen, who looks like a white woman, passed off as the slave master traveling with her slave skin color that's how they were able to achieve this as prominent slaves they were threatened by slave catchers in boston especially with the fugitive slave act so they moved to england they lived there for nearly two decades and raised five children ladies and gentlemen ellen and william craft peace <laughs> <laughs> That's disingenuous. Yeah, Garfield. That's disingenuous, question, Garfield. Garfield. That's the point. Hey, Gar Garfield. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Before I, get, before let, let's get let's get James first. Come on, man. All right. Go so this this is disingenuous because like yes, yeah, you want to say that she passed white. I don't believe in passing, right? So when somebody right. passes for it's white, <laughs> they they show me the person who is black who doesn't have uh European DNA in them. Then I'll believe you. But no, this woman obviously no have a whole point. European no, DNA. Oh, you're not getting the point. So she has to be a white woman. Skin tone. It's I'm not about skin tone. She that Hartenstein. woman had to be white. All uh, right, uh, listen to what I'm saying though. Hartenstein, you would say he's a white guy, but his bio his biological makeup don't say that though. 
How do we know? We don't know it. But we know that his mother is full white and his dad is half white. So you know, theoretically, he's 75 percent white. How do you know his mother is full white? You don't know that. Oh, you, you're right. You're right. We don't know that. But it is said that his mother is a European American. That's what you read, right? Lookership. We are saying by lookership. This is why that person got off, and that's why I showed that video. By lookership, she looked white and she dressed up as a man, and that's how they got out because a woman could never leave it as say so. She had to actually dress up as a man. But the point I'm trying to look at what Thunder is doing now. Look at what Thunder is trying to do to us right now. Thunder, <laughs> I hate you for this. I hate you. Oh, cool. Yeah, he a white man. I don't care what nobody say. He's I a hate black you. man. I hate you. I hate All you. Right, Actually, he's Southeast Asian. But, he look like a Pakistani. God, I don't care what he look like. I'm going to say he black. But you know what? Though, about, but hey, you know. Let's not, let's not jump in here. Hold on. Let Thunder oh, okay. make his point so we could laugh at him right now. I must say, <laughs> <laughs> I must say clearly. If my brother, my Hebrew Israelite brother, wants to go with that narrative and and we're just going to ignore what this man clearly looks like, if we're going to do that, we look gonna, like. I think we I think no, we'll hold, have hold on. To. Time out, time out, Thunder. I'm sorry, Thunder. Please don't interrupt him while he's talking or interject. Just let we hear him because people going to be listening to the replays and it don't sound good when people interrupt. Give him his chance to I speak think, and then you could go after. Go ahead. I think if we're going to Go what your what your father is, and we're going if we're going to disregard lookership. I mean, that's fine if that's what you want to do. I have no desire to do that. But if that's what we're going to do, I think at this point we have to apply it all the way around. We can't be hypocrites. Oh yeah, Higo Nasakwa says far father was said to be jet black. Alfonso can't prove it. Nobody was able to prove that. Of course not. But that's what he said to be. So I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with what they say. I'm gonna go with let's go with the primaries. Maybe we can't prove it, but if we if we have primary account to say the man was just black, I'm gonna say he was just black, and I'm gonna say that Far Muhammad is a black man. That's what I'm gonna say. His mom, his mama was baby G, and his I'm mom, baby. <laughs> right? She was probably, she was probably white. Yeah. Probably was, but I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at this picture. Well, he had to come in sinful flesh. That's why he looks the way he does. <laughs> so we'll, hey. we'll, let's let's disregard lookership, like my brother wants to do, and I don't have the desire to do it. But if we're gonna do that, we gotta apply it all the way around. That's it. Yo, he looks Central Asian or Southeast Asian with nah, Indo Aryan he, people. He looks nah. straight like a white man. Ain't no he don't even look, look like a white man. He looked like he looked like one of my coworkers. His dad from Pakistan. Nothing Asian in that man. <laughs> I see Southeast He's Asian. Bro, I work I'll around them. I know what they look like. He looked Turkish. Hey, by the way, have you guys seen Farrakhan's father? Look up Farrakhan's father. Um, He's, his name is um. Clark. He's a white man. Look at him. He's Jewish. Look at his father. Oh, legit. He Jewish. Yeah. I didn't know that. I He's thought a that white was man, bro. I didn't know he was white. Louis Farrakhan daddy is white. So oh. and, and my brother's Israel bound perspective, he's a white he, Louis Farrakhan is a white leader of a black Hebrew uh black Muslims. I like Farrakhan sometimes, but there's something off about no, him. Man, I do like gotta, I do like do Farrakhan that. though, I ain't gonna lie. We like a lot of people. That don't mean we have to. We're not. We're not. We're not going to speak the truth how we feel. Let so I, go, nobody let know go. Go ahead, more than me. But that don't mean we ain't going to say what we going to say. <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead, Israel. Hey, so a couple of things. Yeah. First off, I'll go back and say again: if your daddy is white, you gonna be white. Good. So <laughs> is white. If his daddy is white, that's what exactly what I'm saying. Okay, Just like I'm right. saying about Bob Marley. But see, but here's the thing. We're getting caught up in skin tones, right? Let's just yeah. take skin color out of it. Let's, just get, let's take skin color out of it. Let's say we was dealing with two different nations of people on that, that, are, that are indigenous to the continent of Africa, right? Then color is not an issue. We're still saying that if this dad, if this child's father is Nigerian and this child's father is Kenyan, then there's a difference in nationalities. We're not talking about skin color at that point. But since we are here, we're dealing with skin color because that's a thing. Right. But it don't matter what the skin color is. It's matter. It's, it's your bloodline. So 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 this is how Garfield just fell on his own sword. 
he said that if uh if if you know if the fact that he had a baby by a black woman that changes the the narrative Okay, so then you're telling me that if you go, I know you wouldn't, but this is hypothetical, Brother Garfield. If you go and had a baby with a white woman, you're telling me you had a white baby? Because you can't have it both ways. Hey, no, hey, it's a mixed race baby. Out. I'm sorry, Thunder. Go ahead. No, it's a, it's a mixed race baby at that point. No, I'm talking to Garfield. Okay, go ahead. All right, all right, so that's not race. the argument you made. Uh, that's the argument Israel, that he made. Israel, 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 let me ask you a question. Where were you born? Where were you born? Where was I born? Yeah. Kansas City, Kansas. All right. Now, let me ask you a question, right? If your father's 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 father is a white man, are you a white man? Which he ain't, but yeah. I'm asking of you course, a question. That's the bloodline. Have, have, you, have, you, have you traced your bloodline back 10 generations? Yeah, all the, yeah, yep. Yep. I'm, I, I'm I, got, a, I got a brother. I, I, I got a brother right here. You know what? Let's do an experiment. I got the brother biblical DNA here. Are you willing to correspond with him, and he could trace your roots for you and tell oh, you? Oh, you mean the DNA? No, 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 no. I, I've, been, I've traced. I've been tracing my, my people. I'm not talking to, about uh, DNA. I'm not talking about DNA. A list, Israel. You got to listen. Okay, I'm not talking okay, about. I, I didn't hear you, brother. Go ahead. I'm talking. I'm talking about genealogy. Okay. Would, are you so willing you to ask to him? Put up, put up your last name. Give him your last name. Y'all could put your information in the back chat, in the private chat. Yeah. Put your email. Yeah. He'll get your email. Yeah. And next week you come back, we'll, we'll look at your genealogy history. Now watch this. If you find out that a slave master is on your father's side, will you give up that you're an Israelite then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, because I know that didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> you won you oh, my heart over. You have won my... Hey, you have won my... Hey, check this out, Garfield. Check this out. Look at me. Go ahead. Oh, look. Look at me. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I don't worry about that. It ain't none of this running through my blood. You see what I'm saying? I know what I am, and I know what my people from. I know where my people come from. You know what I'm saying? So, so at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Uh, if you got, if you are a white man, if you got a white father, if your bloodline is oh, of a white descent, right. that's in? what you are. Marcus Garvey was your jet black. Can't determine your bloodline. <laughs> Marcus Garvey was jet black, and he still had R one B. That don't mean nothing, bro. He come from a white lineage, period. But he was dark skin. He was darker than you. I don't care what skin he was. But you just used the way that you looked to prove that you wasn't, and you don't know. That's a fact. I give you that argument. Okay, I'll good. give you that argument. I'll give you, you know, that argument. You know, when the when 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 the Europeans. The Europeans are the ones that gave us this term black, and they were referring to the dark skinned people who they came across. So I think like Garfield was saying, like we kind of get caught up into the the you know the skin tone where it should be more so focused on ethnicities. Like I could tell you, like me, I'm an Ebo, right? I can tell you, y'all familiar with an artist named uh Shade, Shade I do? Mm-hmm. Yep. I thought she was Yoruba. She's Yoruba. She's Yoruba. But look at her. If she doesn't tell someone that she is, who's going to really assume that, you know, when I was a little, I thought she was like, a, you know, like some English, you know, whatever. I didn't know that she was even African. You know what I'm saying? So you even the, the rapper I was talking about earlier was a guy named Logic. This dude looks straight up white. And he claims he's black because... You know, this thing, how they got the one drop rules and all that stuff. I think we get too caught up into that where it should just really be about what you identify as your, as your uh, ethnicity. Because when you get into skin tones, everybody's kind of mixed up and, and to some degree. And people just going to come out different complexions, whether it be from the father or from the mother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, genetics. Right. We can't we can't really explain oh, oh hold on, hold on. Look. Let me cut you off, bro. Oh, and, and I'm being I'm being rude and I'm not trying to be, but you you yeah. mentioned logic and I just looked this guy up. Yeah. You saying that put put Shepard Screen Garfield, take that whatever that is down for. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. I'm I'm not I'm not saying no listen listen to me. Let, check me out, yeah. check me out. I got you. I'm I got saying you. what he claims. I'm with you. Let just let me yeah, let okay. me ride for okay. a minute. Give me 30 okay, seconds. Okay. Hey, take that oh, down yeah. for me, Garfield. 
Garfield. Yeah, all right. So everybody, we know logic. Oh, logic? Yo, that's an abomination, bro. Listen, no. to, listen, listen. We know logic. Everybody knows this guy right here. Logic the rapper, right? Mm -hmm. Um, his name is Sir Robert Bryson Hall the second, whatever, right? So we know him. Everybody yeah. gonna look at him and say that is a classic Caucasian, right? For sure, for sure. Now, mm -hmm. yep. according to my brother Israel. Sir Robert Bryson Hall II was born on January 22, 1990 at Shady Grove Hospital in Rockville, Maryland. He was born to Robert Bryson Hall, a black Maryland native, and a white mother. We don't even know who the white mother was, right? But we know that his dad is black. Well, look at his dad. And don't listen to what I'm saying. If you expect me to call logic, this guy here a black man? Let me let's pull up some more. Let me pull up. Some no, his more. to me, his dad don't really look that black. It ain't got it. That's what it say though. It say lie. Yeah, but they go by the one drop. I'm against. Uh -huh. the oh, hold on, it, hold on. It. You see, uh -huh. you see the mistake we're making. It is it, such and such don't look too black. You see, yeah. that's where we're off. It's this is why we gotta reflect on these conversations we're having about race and who is black and who is white. This is why I'm trying to steer away from using these racialized terms. Because oh, now you here. You this is why it's African Americans alone no, should be black. No, Nobody no, no, no. I think black real. off of what Western Central Africans look like. I'm the one. Nah, don't don't put that real. shit on us, Garfield. Y'all black too. Jamaican, Rasclad, Bumbaclad, oh, boy. Yeah, because y'all just sending from Western Central Africans. I'm Jamaican. Y'all black. Y'all blacker Western than us. Y'all Jamaicans blacker than us. I'm Jamaican. All right, look Jamaican at this right Western here. Africans. Look at this guy. I mean, I'm telling you. And that's his baby mama too. White is everything else. Israel Bow, Israel Bow, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you breaking up, Israel. Break it up, bro. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, you just breaking up. I want to hear what you got to say, but you hold on. What's his name? He's been trying to say something the whole day. Obi, Obi, you want to say something, brother? Oh, no, no. What, what I was saying, was when oh, you're chipping out too, bro. You're chipping out too. You're chipping out too. You're chipping, you're chippy. Lo I had no clue that logic was, was not. I can't believe this. But you want me to say he black? Come on, man! Look at this guy. Mm -hmm. But but he's so black. He hang around black people. So what I mean? But look at his kids, though. <laughs> look at this. Yo, yo, look at what he produced. <laughs> That's look a black he man. Produces, so if bro. he black, you can't tell me far Muhammad. Nah, bro. Nah, nah. Ain't nobody say he was black. I don't say he hold black. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where Israel, bro? Israel Baum, can he is he possibly an Israelite? <laughs> <laughs> so once again, I, none of that really moves me because once it depends on where your bloodline comes from. Like He's you would, black. none of this would be like none of this would even be a, a, a dispute if two people, like I said, was on the continent and was uh, disputing lineage. See, y'all making this about skin color. You know what I'm saying? It don't got nothing to do with skin color. If being somebody black, being to, white don't have nothing to do with skin color, that what you saying? Nah, because oh, yeah. white is not because white is not a nationality. You so still you be talking a dark about color? White I'm talking about nations. Good. So you could be a dark skinned white person. That what you saying? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, you can. You can. Okay. I've seen it. That's a joke. You can. In the racialized terms, messes up messes us up. Uh, you know, I agree. You, you could be a I dark agree. skinned white person. There's light skinned black people, so yeah, they could be dark skinned. Yeah. What's a dark skinned white? I mean, I, 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 Sicilians, uh, Maltese, uh, some Spanish people. If you go down to like you know, near the Mexican, Mexican. Mexican. No, are you some saying Mexican. Caucasian? Hmm. Yo, those yeah, statements are Caucasian contradictory. A dark skinned yeah, white. I person? mean, but yeah, so I is light skinned black person. James. Are you but, saying but, right, exactly, European? exactly. Yet his mom is full European. His dad is partially European. He will be mostly European. I'm asking you: Are you saying that the dark skinned Europeans? Are you saying dark skinned Europeans, dark skinned white, or dark skinned Caucasian? Which one? Do you They're say? dark skinned. I guess white. They will be like every other white person. How can they be it's a dark they can white person? Because they yeah, can tan. See, that's... Like, but like just because you're white doesn't mean that you can't tan. The no, same but, way uh, you can be a, the same way you can be a light skinned dark person. 
or yeah, exactly. uh, uh, light skin black person. Black. What all white people are blonde hair and blue eyes? That's crazy. Most white people are brown that. eyes blonde and brown hair. hair. I didn't say that. Okay, know, then, then why do you always think hair. that white people can only be one thing? The majority no, of them got brown I'm hair and brown about eyes. Their skin color. Yeah, but the the skin tone that's not that's not a nation. You know right. what I mean? That's, so you ain't seen. So you have. So none of y'all never seen none of these videos of these uh, African women that had these all white babies. No, well, I, I know that's a condition. Bro. It's still black. Huh? You talking about albinism? Albinism is a condition. No, it's not albinism. Go. All you gotta do is look it up. No, look you like put it up. I mean, what, when babies are born, no, when white babies are born, they kind of light. My brother was light. He looked like an Asian. Okay, light. All you got when you get off, all you gotta do is go look it up. You're darker. This huh? is a this is a black guy. No. Yes, it is. He has a father who could be considered way, black. Lo logic is biracial. Technically, he's biracial when you want to use colloquial terms. He's biracial. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Colloquially. But genetically, if he ever did a DNA test, he might end up being more European. But see, the problem with the, the problem with labeling people as biracial is that what is your nation then? Where do you come from? Yeah, your nation United States is American. No, I'm saying like, wouldn't wouldn't it be from the blood, the blood line of your father? That's your nation's right. coming. No, home. they don't do that in America. They don't do that in America no more. And during slavery, they went back. Uh, uh, the, the what they line. do in America, don't hey in America they say men can marry men. That don't mean I'm about to go do it. So that don't that shit don't huh? apply to me. Yo 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 yo. Oh, yeah, yeah. False Nations coming go. Not you never go by nation. You just ain't caught up to yeah. it yet. Nations come and go. You never go by nation. Everybody, everybody that yeah. used to be Roman. Right. Romans don't exist anymore. Whoa. Hey, everybody, hey, everybody, hey, everybody ethnicity. Up. Hey, ethnicity. Hey, 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 relax, relax. Everybody mute up for one second. Let me just read right. this right here. All right. This is important. Dark and swarthy Europeans are still light. We've seen how olive skin is misunderstood by people to mean tan or non-white. Now, let's look at the same thing with words like dark and swarthy used to describe the complexions of Europeans. People treat them as evidence against whiteness, but they're really just exaggerations of reality. Benjamin Franklin applied them to a lot of groups that are far from dark, basically lumping all whites who weren't Anglo-Saxon into a swarthy group with non-whites, including some who are probably lighter than English people. He wrote, all Africa is black or tawny, Asia chiefly tawny, America exclusive of the newcomers, wholly so. And in Europe, the Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what we call a swarthy complexion, as are the Germans also. The Saxons only accepted who with the English make the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. Now, let me say something before I read the rest. People who are part of the black Hebrew Israelite persuasion take this statement and thinks that all the Europeans were black because they say swarthy means black. Well, anyway, let me finish this article. Another well-known example of this kind of exaggeration is English ideas about the so-called black Irish. They are really just white people from the British Isles who have dark hair and eyes and a Mediterranean appearance, like Colin Farrell, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Sean Connery, Mr. Bean, Russell Brand, and many others. Those are black. But old school Nordicists used to claim that part of the Celtic physiognomy was black-tinted skin. But even when applied to darker Southern Europeans, there's still an exaggeration like in this passage from white on arrival about how Italian gangsters were portrayed in the media. Al Capone was constantly portrayed in books, magazines, articles, pulps, and movies as having a dark or swarthy complexion. When he appeared in court in 1929 in Philadelphia on charges of having a concealed weapon, the Chicago Daily News noticed that his face, which is rather dark, assumed a dull reddish hue. No one emphasized Italians dark features more than popular writer and former newsman Walter Burns in his book, The One Way Ride. Johnny Torrio was a slight, dapper, dark young man. 
gunmen John Scalisi and Albert Anselmi had dark faces. The Jenna brothers were swarthy, black-haired, black-eyed, looked not unlike Arabs and probably had in their ancestral strain a strong dash of Saracenic blood, which is North African. From these descriptions, you'd probably picture really dark Saudi Arabians or maybe even mixed-race Berbers. But here's what those people actually look like. The rear mugshot of Capone has been skillfully colorized to show his blue eyes. So this is Al Capone right here on the left-hand side. These are the Jenna brothers, right? This is Johnny Torrio, and this is John Scalisi and Albert Anselmi. In our eyes today, we would call these men white, but they would call them swarthy and dark and all that stuff. So the lesson is not take descriptions like that literally or as meaning something non-white. Europeans, including Southern Europeans, actually have the lightest untanned skin in the world. So even when they are dark or swarthy, they are still lighter than everyone else. I yield. Facts. So can we get away from phenotype as describing lineage? Because those are two different things. They're not the same. The social I construct agree. about I who agree. is black, who's black or white, that's a social construct people make up based on how well oh, they look no. and identify. Oh, no, not a It's three. made up. Racism. It is made up. To, to be real thunder, it is made up. Ah, oh, nigga. I don't yeah. want none of y'all on my but, side. But you know what? Don't they don't fit the that. Here's how I see blackness. If racism. You don't... Okay, let me ask you a question. Is, there, is racism real, James? Yes, it's real. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, all right. But but so but, but the construct. Right. Say 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 what you say. Go ahead. I, I, no, I, no, I was just gonna yeah. say that racism is is real now, but the construct the that you said racism grouping is, people, is not real. No racism. No people. Today people is make real. up the social construct of black and white. It's, that's created yeah. by people to that's, identify yeah. groups. So race, yeah, that's, is, race is real or right? Not real. Which one is? It? It's race real. Is not, race race was created. So I'm saying it's not naturally real. It's, it wasn't. It's, that's not uh, how people it's were. Race, not biologically real, real, but it's culturally real. It's race so as real. a con race as a concept is real. It does affect you, but as far as genetically, there's no separate race. Race scientific. It's not biological. I wouldn't say it's biological, but it's it, no, it's, it's not biological. All right, good. So it's that means it ain't real. Okay, so is yeah. love no. real? All right, good. So wait, wait is love real with thunder? Is it, Let me ask you a question. You say what? Is love real? Yeah, love is an action. I, 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 it's an action, but so is racism. So when the plan comes to break on your on you your lawn because you're black, is a is an action. Yes, it can be an action. It could be a social structure. There's a lot of things with racism. Which one is it, man? Is it the social? Come on, man. Hold on, hold on. No, hold on. Let's no, 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 no. It's not Let's... genetic, bro. But it is. But it is, is it scientific. No, it's no, not scientific. no, yes, no, actually, no, no, no. Social, yes, social science wise, yes, it is. Is lo is, is biologically love no. Is love scientific? No. Is is feelings and emotion scientific, James? Are you serious? If you want to say it's chemicals, you want to say that, but the same thing is happening with racist. What are you talking about? I, I see where you're going. I see what I see. You, I oh, see of course, where you're you going. see where I'm going. Yeah. Rich, yeah. I see where I'm going. I'm just saying, can y'all get what, down what, to the lineage, what, what I, lineage arguments? Lineage. Yeah. Oh, so I did have. That's, that's, that's what Hebrew I really Israelite, was. We doing that. Over no, what? That's what. That's I what the show is titled: The Hebrew Israelites. I I do have question about the lineage thing because like I. I like I'm I'm Ebo, right? So when I what caught my attention with the title was it said biblical DNA. And I know there's a conversation about Ebos being uh supposedly linked to uh being being Hebrews or being Israel to Israel, to biblical Israel. Now I am not gonna lie, um I used to be under, I, I was under that belief that once I heard that we had some lineage linked to Israel and the story that I heard, the different stories, you know, I kind of was, but when you actually, when I actually did my research and actually, uh, you know, got, I already knew my family, but the thing is, when you find, when I find out that 
how can there be a DNA or a link or a lineage to Israel when the person, Israel or uh, Jacob, there is no DNA for that person? How can they link? Yes, uh, it is. Israelites or... have a DNA, bro. Yeah, but Jay is shared well, through everybody. Wait, wait, wait. But what? But 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 when you say the light. An Israelite is a descendant of the person Israel, so right. that can just be a claim. I'm talking Obi. about oh, Israelis yes. have a DNA marker, man. No, so there's something that's called the Cohen gene, but like ancient Canaanites also share J with the ancient Israelites because the ancient Israelites are Canaanites, so J right. is shared through people who are not just Israel. That doesn't that still don't say anything against them having a, a DNA, bro. Yeah, but a lot of people who aren't Israelites also share that marker. So it's not specific enough, especially in the Bible. You have to be a descendant of Jacob slash Israel. Oh, we're talking about so, DNA. Yes, so, DNA wise, most Jewish, most of the ancient Israelites are J2. But a lot of people share J2 who aren't Israelites. Fine. So it's not specific. But we're not enough. talking about the other people, Jay. You look but you the problem with but them. the problem with the Jewish people is that they separate themselves from the Canaanites. But the Israelites are Canaanites. Bro, you all over the place. I'm do all over Israelites the place. have a DNA? Yes or no? But so do Canaanites. I'm asking you, but do they have one? But Israelites biblically Jane, are not Canaanites. Israelites That's what I'm saying. DNA. Everybody Canaan is a, a, a catch-all term. Uh, catch term. Have a DNA. But, but, okay. Look, my, Jay, what, what I was, what I was, to be an Israelite, what, to be an Israelite, what do you have to be? Hey, James, yeah. does Israelites yeah. have a DNA marker? No, I'm going to say no. Okay, good. All right, no problem. Let's do that. Let's go <laughs> but, but can I, can I, what it, it's, it's kind of what it, what he was saying, though. Israelite, that term Israelite is meaning that you're a descendant of Jacob or Israel, whatever name you want to use, there is no source for that person. So mm -hmm. everyone, anyone saying that they are an Israelite, even if you want to go, that is a claim that they are a descendant of that person. Yeah, that's not, that's that's not proven. But, not but regardless proven. of the claim, the people who lived in that region who professed to be so does have a genetic mark. That's who we going off. Well, that's the, my problem. Jacob, that's my is the problem. Problem. Jacob is an eponymous ancestor, no different than a, a Greek eponymous. Regardless of who they say they came from, they existed. So we go off the remains of the people, regardless of who they say they come from. But, that's but those YDNA markers are not separate from the Canaanites that they say that that's they are. That's fine, because they came out of a... a, a uh, people from that region anyway, so they won't have a separate lineage. All the sis, all the so-called Semites would have a paternal lineage that are that is somewhat similar or down. And, 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 and that's the point. Let's, let's be honest and stop playing games. Oh, they yeah, have no, they have they have way over a hundred samples of people living in the region from the Bronze Age all the way down to the Iron Two Age, yeah. and they haven't even found one E one B one A yet. No problem. Speak on it. Speak on it. Hold on, hold on. Let's let's bring biblical DNA in because this is why he's here. So let's talk about it. Biblical DNA. Where's your evidence? Let's go. I got mine already. Peace, biblical. Hey, peace, peace, peace. I'm just over here listening. Jews have a Because that's my problem. Because if someone can take take a Ebo and say that they are Igbos, you know, we have our own history. We have our own heritage. And if they're just going to say that, oh, we are linked to a place just by DNA, but not, I mean, to a person, not just a, a place. Because the Bible says that there's all kind of mixing in that area. People got yeah, exiled, came back, and this and that. Talk. A O O E uh, O B. Yeah. How does the Ebo connect to to the Israelites? Does it go by Ari? No, okay. I don't believe none of that. That's what. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. We're doing too much things. Yeah. Let's deal with biblical DNA right now. That's why he's here. 
Yeah, all, right. all his questions should go to biblical DNA because he knows. All right, the DNA. let's go. Go ahead, brother. All right. So go. this is the the Ebo, right? This is a population average right here. So this is all the samples of Ebo that's available, and this is my own. This is the source that I use right here. These are all the sources. Let me get back up. And come on. All right. Come on. Why is it blurry for? There we go. So we have a Neolithic Spain, Cameroon, Ethiopian, um, Greece, Neolithic, um, Hungary, Neolithic, Iranian, Neolithic, Mesopotamian, Neolithic, Italian, Neolithic, so on and so forth, right? And when we see the Igbo do not distance towards no, no Levantine Neolithics, right? But when you go to the Canaanites and whatnot, the, the Egyptian samples that's available, hold on, they hold do. On. Before, before you go somewhere else, make this uh -huh. bigger so somebody could screenshot. Okay. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have on the screen right now. Make it a little bit bigger. All right. Yeah. There you go. All right. All right. What were you saying now as far as distance to Igbo? And we see also right here, we see um, that they share a, a small percentage of Neolithic or this is called Epipolitic um, Moroccan, Iberian Merusian. And then when the paper went out, that was published, that's exactly what they found out too, right? But let's go to the Canaanites. So we mentioned the Canaanites, Israelites, and whatnot. Well, it's already been proven that the, the Canaanites were the Israelites. There was no population replacement. The population of the second millennium um, BCE population, they were the same people. It was no population replacement, no people that got kicked out of the land and killed, none of that nonsense, All right? Let me go ahead and pull this up. So the Bible says that, but you hold on, hold on, time. hold on, bro. Hold on, hold on. Let him finish. We're teaching. talking about hold DNA, on. man, not a Bible. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it said Bible DNA, so I'm just. Well, my name actually is to actually bring DNA to life in the Bible because the Bible isn't historically accurate. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Man. You said the Bible is or isn't historic. Isn't. Is it's not. It's not. It's not. No. That's what he's saying. He's saying yeah. it's not. Okay. It's okay. Not. I, I didn't I didn't know. Sorry. It's not historically accurate. I disagree with you. That is historically accurate. The Bible don't, don't do is it biblical. He's calling. Don't don't do it. Don't do it biblical. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> 93. You telling me the all right, Garfield. Is the Bible historically accurate? Come on, man. We on we on this topic right here. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, these are the modern Egyptian samples. What do we see? They're tracing back to the Neolithic Levant to Israel, but the Igbo do not. You see what I'm saying? Look at the averages. Okay. So DNA Neolithic not Israel, Neolith Neolithic Mesopotamian. Neolithic Iranian, but look, what's the small percentages? Cameroon, Ethiopia, they're distancing away from the from those samples. Like the Igbo are, are distancing closer to those samples, while Egyptians, Canaanites, they're all distancing um towards Neolithic um Levantine populations. That's the reason why when they say that um the Egyptians that they have like an admixture of Middle Eastern, that's what they're talking about. Mm. Mm hmm. Okay. I mean, man, you you hear different things. Like, I don't know how did how did they link us? How not when I say they, um, you know, there's a there, there's a movement going on that's like you know trying to say that we are we have a, a lineage to Israel, and I thought it was by DNA. So I was just well, trying to Jews see came how, to West Africa. It definitely was Jewish cust uh, people exchanging um, customs and Jews in West Africa. So. Yeah, but could have biblical, been. biblical Israel though. I mean, Jews. That's a that's a broad term. That could, you know, they say you know Jews are all over the world. I'm talking about probably so far. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about a, a link, a link, a lineage link to what is biblical Israel. You know, um, one of the stories is you know they say that they uh, you know they traveled all the way from there. So I, but when I heard that. 
that hey guys, that can you up. let biblical DNA finish teaching first and then you guys ask the questions? Because what he's doing, a lot of people are gonna learn from the continuity of what he's trying to show. So let him finish doing what he's doing, write your question down, and then get him. I want y'all to get him. He think he know everything, so get him. All right. It's, and and for those finish. for those new um to this, this is um this is G25. You can get your G25 on DNA genics or illustrative DNA. And basically, if you've done a DNA, another DNA test with Ancestry, 23andMe, MyHeritage, you can take that um that file, your data file, and you can um, get a discount running it through um, one of those websites. But basically what we see, we got Lebanese Christian, Lebanese um, Druze, Lebanese Muslims, right? And these are population averages. Now, I can take each sample from these population and they'll get different percentages. Some might be closer to Neolithic uh, Levantine in Israel. Some might be closer to uh, Iranian on um, the Zagros, that, that the top one, the 36.9. But the majority of these samples, we see that they have a Levantine Middle Eastern um, admixture. But Igbo, Igbo do not have that. They're going, tr they're tracing back to Africa. Yes, I agree 100%. We need more samples. We need more popula ancient population samples to represent um, Sub-Saharan Africa. I don't care if it's freaking West, Central, South. We need more samples. But we know it's hard because the humidity, the climate, you know, populations are a sample. Ancient DNA is very difficult um, to retain. All right. You want me to do the Canaanite real quick, um, Brother Garfield? Absolutely. Okay. Got you too easy. All right. Let me select all of these Canaanite samples. Target. Select all. Man, I don't know why it's coming on cricket like this for. I'm about to go to another website. I. I. All right. All right, so these are all, let me take out this Caucasus one. All right, these are all Canaanite samples found in um, Middle, Late Bronze Age Israel. And I'm also, let me go ahead and get the uh, Lebanese Canaanites. I'm gonna show you something. Lebanon. The difference between the Leban, uh, Lebanese Canaanites from the, is from the Middle Bronze Age. So the ones from Lebanon are from the Middle Bronze Age, which you're gonna see right now. Mm. Go ahead. And we also have samples, Egyptian, mixed um, Egyptian samples that was found in Lebanon also. All right, here we go. So we'll go ahead and clear that. Start from the... You see what I'm saying? They're distancing more towards um, Iran, Armenia, Iraq, and whatnot. Let me zoom in for y'all. And we can go to the paper where it states this, like the ad mixture they had was towards a, a Neolithic Levantine a Calcolithic on uh, Levantine, and then a Bronze Age from the Caucasus. And that's exactly what you're saying. And I can also, what I will do is I'll, I'll take these samples, these Canaanite samples, and I'll run it towards all modern day populations. And we're gonna see which populations come the closest. You'll be surprised. You might think it's just the Lebanese, but it's not. All right, go ahead and do the ad mixture. Check this out. What you see, Mesopotamia, Neolithic Mesopotamia. Israel, pre or Neolithic B. Zagros, Neolithic, Iranian. Armenian, 
Natufian, um, Anatolian Neolithic. These are the populations that these uh, Levantine populations carried. This is what their admixture was. I think I already actually did a, um, yeah, I did these already. Okay, cool. So I took all the Canaanite samples right here, right? Or these are the, okay, yeah, I took all of them from Lebanon to Israel, right? I already calculated it. Look at this, y'all. The Samaritans, Yemenites, Armenians, Yemenite Jew, uh, Georgian, Druze, Armenian. And these are their nearest neighbors. Nowhere on here do you see evil. You see Samaritans, all the Samaritan family samples that's available. Look at that, y'all. Lebanese. So when they, when the, the publish, um, when they publish that Israelite DNA from Karyat Urim, this is exactly what it's going to show too, because remember, it's a continuity of the second millennium um, BCE population. It was no population replacement. And just for the um, these are the two ancient samples um from Egypt. The one sample I think it's called JK two eight eight. That sample ID is considered contaminated, so um that one's removed. But these are the two other samples. Now these two samples actually belong to the Y DNA of J one and J two. The EV twenty two sample um was considered contaminated, and that's based off of Dr. Ryak's lab. You see what they, they're clustering with? The Yemenites, the Berbers, the Cypriot, the Sardinians, Samaritans, at a small percentage, look at that. Bedouin A, Egyptian, Bedouin B, Yemenite, Yemenite, Palestinian. All right, y'all good? Y'all want me to show anything else? Or y'all good? PCAs. We, you know, the people have a uh, criticism for PCAs. What do you say? Because they, you know, they used El Hayek in the past. I've asked you this before, but for people who try to doubt the accuracy of PCAs used for populations, um, comparisons to ancient samples. Mm hmm. Yeah, he's talking about a principal component analysis. Right. People have so called criticism of it. And um, I've seen some Israelites criticize it to try to say it's inaccurate. What do you say to that? No, nah, it's that's pr that's what the geneticists use. That's what these um biological um archaeologists. That's what they use. So as to me, it's ridiculous. Um, I got this on my on my profile on on YouTube for those that are interested. But you can go to Vahadul. Um, they have the population, the PCA on here. To me, to to discredit this is absolutely ridiculous because these populations are correct when these samples come up these these na neighboring neighbors cluster together that's absolutely correct that's not there's no conspiracy behind that how do i get my g25 so you can go on there's two websites there's illustrative dna um I, you want me to go to the website for you uh, yeah because i do have my raw data and i don't know if that's involved uh, yeah, so Illustrator DNA, that's the web. This is one of the websites you can go to. And the other one is DNA Genetics, which I already got it. Um, I already got it up. Can y'all see that? Can you see that? Uh, DNA Genetics. You good? And you're going to upload your raw data right there for illustrative DNA and the same thing for DNA gen genetics. Basically, I waited for a discount. I got a huge discount. Look at that right there. Save 65%. Use code SPRING65. Check that out. They should give Brother Garfield um, some credits for promoting the website. I'm just saying. Free advertisement. What about the Yoruba? Because they say the Yoruba have like that uh, 
ghost population or that like your Asian population that everybody keeps saying, but I never see it. Yeah, and so and so um Razi Khan, he brought up good points when he came on last time. He was talking about a population that hasn't been sequenced yet. So there's a population that's not um that's showing up in the um the F five statistics. And basically they're showing that they're missing a population that can be closer. So that could be considered a ghost population. The same thing with archaic uh, hominids. If we have archaic hominids, like me, for example, I have pretty much all three archaic hominids, um, African um, archaic, Neanderthal, and Denisovan, because of my Native American ancestry, European ancestry, African ancestry. So I have all three. So if I have another one, that's another ghost population. That's another population. Um, like 23 and me, they'll pretty they'll pretty much say like you have a, a specific percentage of DNA that's unaccounted for. I'm not sure if it's regarding that, but um yeah. I mean, I do I mean, like, so I do have um it said on 23 and me that I had less than two percent uh Neanderthal DNA. I mm -hmm. don't know what that means, but I'm only four percent um, what do you call it? European and like two percent Native American. Yeah, and I know that with mm -hmm. East Asians, they have the highest uh Neanderthal DNA, even though people think it's Europeans. Yeah. They, yeah, Asians have the most East Asians have the most Neanderthal DNA. So so like I don't know what that less than two percent is because like genetically I'm 95 percent uh sub-Saharan African. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk if you want to, we you just get a hold of me, we could talk about it. We'll yeah, find, yeah, I can find out, and this this G twenty five will definitely help me because I can see what your um what your distance um what your distance is to ancient samples and modern day samples and whatnot. Right, right. Um, but these are the this is one of the samples of the ancient Egyptians. Um, so I ran it through DNA Genetics. You got um Ancestry Studio, which I think that's a basic membership, like the basic like membership, whatever. You just pay a one time fee. And you get access to all these um, studios and whatnot. And they have different um, calculators that you can run your DNA through. And basically, this is one of the, the Egyptian samples right here that I have up here. And this is the results. So this individual, this um, ancient Egyptian sample came up as 31% um, Levantine Neolithic, Mesopotamian Neolithic, 27%. Um, Levantine Neolithic B. So these are multiple samples of um, pre-pottery Neolithic B from the Neolithic Levantine populations. But what, what this is saying is that this sample uh, clustered clo closer to these samples than they would have to other ancient samples. And so I guess it's um epipolithic um North African DNA, the top for a lot. Oh yeah, hopefully that cleared everything up. And if anybody like dismisses this, check this out. It's right here. And we can go to the breakdown of what these people was carrying too when they came up with that paper back in October. Um of what the Canaanites consisted of. Now that Haber had confirmed who the Canaanites were, he set out to find out what happened to them. He compared their genomes to those of 99 living Lebanese people and hundreds of others in genetic databases. Haber found that the present day Lebanese population is largely descended from the ancient Canaanites, inheriting more than 90% of their genes from this ancient source. The other 7% may have come from migrants from Central Europe who moved to the Levant around 3,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So as, as we can see, the Canaanites weren't wiped out. They're just living on with the Lebanese, the Samaritans, and whatnot. And somebody mentioned about um, Israelite DNA and whatnot, right? So there is ancient, ancient Israelite DNA. We're still waiting for it to be actually published. Um, and 
that's when it comes out it's pretty much we'll find out what like doing the same thing if there's any difference at all on our like just on the the amateur side of things like just playing with genetics and what now we can see exactly if there's any difference in the in the admixture of these samples but, yeah I mean, because we we know that there's like an ashkenazi marker because there was a genetic mm -hmm. bottleneck that happened in europe but did the same thing happen in like ancient israel where there's a specific marker um what do you mean by marker um that i make sure is different than are you talking about like the y chromosome are you talking about that cohen cohen model haplotype if that's what i'm talking about but i did hear that like uh, amongst ashkenazis their population shrunk to like 300 individuals at one point in europe and the population grew from that 300 so there is like a i don't maybe it's not a genetic maybe i'm saying the wrong terminology saying mm -hmm. it's a genetic marker but it's like a um it's it's something that's distinct that's only associated with that population but maybe i don't know what maybe i'm wrong yeah yeah I, yeah i'm probably wrong i don't know but like when i sell my dna test within my european there's ashkenazi jewish but it's something that's different that's different from the other european populations so i was i was asking that question like what is that Thank you. Thank you. Might be talking about a bottleneck effect. Yeah, yeah, it was a bottleneck, right? Because their population got real low. Mm hmm. Yeah, that, you're talking about a bottleneck effect. I think that's what that is. But that's not a, a marker, though. Like, so they basically just intermingled amongst themselves and they created an admixture, a close population to themselves. And see that was done in Europe. Now, if if you go to Ashkenazi family tree DNA Y chromosomes, right, you you'll see that Ashkenazi Jews carry a bunch of Y chromosomes. They don't carry just one Y chromosome. They carry a lot from from E to J to I to R to T. All of them. They carry uh, a Q. They carry a lot of haplogroups, Y DNA and MT DNA. They're all over the place. So that 400 um, years of genetic bottlenecking effect. Yeah, OK, that was 400 years. And that's the reason why I like why chromosomes and MT DNA is so unique, because the only change it does is a is a mutation. It, it continues on with an, a new S&P, but you're still under. See, I'm EV13. I'm still under EV13. I have a specific S&P under EV13. You get what I'm saying? And so Ashkenazi Jews or Levites, them having like R1A, right? I'm actually working on this presentation I want to do about Ashkenazi Jews and their, what's well, that, the Roman Empire and whatnot. They have a high percentage of R1A Z93. It's around 15% or so, but uh, the Levites specifically, they carry it really high. Now, there's these samples, this R1A Z93, it's found in different Slavic samples. Um, I know the Scythians carried it, the Khazars are said to carry it. There's a few different populations that, that tended to carry it. So, people like Iran Al Hayek. He'll sit there and see this white chromosome and say, look, this is proof that Ashkenazi Jews have a, uh, a, a Khazar or a Slavic um, admixture amongst them, a lineage amongst them because of this white chromosome. All right. All right. Back to this Canaanite to Israelite, though. So a bona fide Israelite bone. Over the years, scientists have found some indirect evidence pertaining to the genetic origins of the Israelites. More about this later. By looking at the DNA of modern Jews as well as Bronze Age Canaanites who preceded the formation of the ancient Israelite identity. But direct access to ancient Israelite DNA and all the information contained therein has so far eluded researchers. Right. And we get the whole, the Canaanites begat Abraham. And the reason why they're saying that is because the, um, 
the most dominant Y chromosome found in the ancient Canaanite samples is haplogroup J2. And so one of the samples that they found in the Israelite from on um, Kariat Urim, it's an Iron Age 2, I believe it's around 700 BCE or 800 to 700 BCE. But this sample carried um, y, um, y DNA J2, right? And so that was the main haplogroup amongst the Canaanites. So, and it says, this is important because as mentioned, researchers have already met the DNA of ancient Canaanites showing that they had a strong ancestral connection to modern day Jewish and Arab populations. That research published in Cell in 2020 also showed that the Canaanites in the middle and late bronze age that's the reason why I showed y'all both the middle and the uh, late bronze, middle, late bronze age before the emergence of the Israelite identity descended from a mix of Neolithic inhabitants of the Levant and a group that inter, um, immigrated from the Caucasus or Eastern Anatolia. Mm-hmm. And this migration was already in motion in the early Bronze Age, around 2900 to 2500 BCE, and is also visible archaeologically with pottery from this period uh, exhibiting strong influences from Anatolia and the Caucasus. It continued in the Middle Bronze Age, as seen in the study of ancient DNA of individuals from Megiddo and other places and is evident in the mention in historical text of Canaanite officials in the late Bronze Age with names that are not Semitic and originate in the Northeastern uh, Middle East, Finkelstein says. All right. Y'all want me to show anything else? I don't know if y'all want to, somebody wants to talk about this. I mean, I, pre I appreciate it. I, I appreciate that, though. That's that's some mm -hmm. that's some information I ain't really, you know, I wasn't really too privy on. That's what uh, I kind of came here to kind of see. But I guess you actually said um, that there's they still haven't published that ancient Israelite DNA. That's what you were saying. Yeah, correct. So what it looks like, um, Israel Finkelstein. Um, they want to do a book about it. There's a presenta uh, presentation that's going to be aired on April 21st. It's um, They have more findings from Iron Age Tel Megiddo. And so, but from what I've heard or read, they want to do a, um, a book on this topic. Let me get you the name of that book real quick. I got to pull up the website. And so I don't know what's going on. I don't know when they plan on publishing because it this was brought up back in 2022, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been a hot minute. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, actually, ironically, that's kind of I think when that whole thing with the uh, that Jewish community uh, accepting the Ebos as a uh, as uh, oh well, Jews. that's so um maybe maybe that has some correlation. I'm not sure. That's Jonathan Mota. You're talking about Jonathan Mota. That's him. That's on Obadiah Alliance. Okay. And okay. I don't want to, if you want to personally talk to me offline, I can tell you some things that I found, but I don't want to do that on Brother Garfield's channel. <laughs> tell Garfield. Sure. Nah, because sure. Garfield said he wants to keep good um, good relationships with him. So no, I'm no, not. I'm talking about offline, offline if you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah, you. For sure. Sure. All right, so the here it is. I got it right here. So one of the mitochondrials. So there's a paper that was released, but it was only on the empty DNA. But um, that's not the one I want. I guess they took it down. Here we go. So one is so there's supposed to be two um scientific public um publications. One was the ancient mitochondrial DNA analysis of an iron two burial cave. Um, on the slope of Tel Kariath Urim by Eros Shas, 
David Reich, Gideon Goldenberg, uh, Lara Frude, Virid Ashed, and Israel Finkelstein. And on pages 49 through 67 in volume 16 of the book series, New Studies in the Archaeology uh, of Jerusalem, edited, up, edited by uh, Yefet, the Yefet Sharelev. I don't know. Let me put the let me put this in the chat if I can. So I don't see it. It was supposed to be published in sale though, just to let you know. That's when um when I initially um watched the 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 like the what was it? A presentation by Israel Finkelstein on um, one of these websites or um, channels on YouTube. He he mentioned it, and it was supposed to be published in sale, but I have not seen it. I got the clip on my YouTube channel, but it has okay. not been published. But I just okay. put it in the chat of the right, book it's supposed sure. to be published in. I I catch that. I catch it on the playback for sure. Mm hmm. And put this in the chat. So can I ask you a personal question? As far as um, like with the with the with the uh with the integrity of these because I don't even understand how it works with the um how they find uh ancient uh DNA like pertaining to like Israelite things. Um like how what is is there like how was the organization how was that organized and is there any like as a as a black person do you fully trust the integrity like because are there any like Africans involved in this or because from what I, I'm not gonna say like what I've you know kind of heard as far as like uh that with that community but it seems like I, I've heard that it's not really um it's kind of like, is it more exclusive to a certain group or is it, is it widely uh, uh, inclusive for other, you, if you get what I'm trying to say? Um, no. Like, are you saying no. that only specific ethnicities are into like archeology span and genetics? Like they get accepted man. to go to school for that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, like when no, they, when they, find, when, they no. find, when they find new stuff that's, that's ancient. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think there's that's any discrimination. A that's a conspiracy. Yeah, theory. science. Well, biblical, is biblical is not a black person. Science, science is science. Science is science, and wherever it comes from, if if you have something to prove and say, hey, you know, well, white folks always listen. I think, I think, once you're in that mindset, you're not, you're gonna reject all science. The bottom line to all what he's saying is this: they have information. They don't have Jacobs. Um, DNA. They don't have Isaac, Abraham, Moses. They don't have that because one, you're not allowed to dig up old people stuff. And, and two, they are considered eponymous ancestors. They're not even considered real people. So what they, what that tradition of Abraham and Isaac and, and Moses and them, it's part of the etiology of the, um, of the Israelites, meaning that they made up a whole tradition, just like what every other culture did. Egypt did it. Sumer did it. Akkadians did it, the Assyrians did it, the Persians did it, the Greeks did it. The Greeks were the best at it because Greeks invented chronological synchronistic writing, which is what the Pentateuch is. It's a writing in order, in the goals in order chronologically, and it's synchronized with history. So that's what that's why they were the, the Greeks were the first to do that in a book form before Egypt, before all everybody else. Nobody had nobody's talking about putting books together. That's a Greek thing, and people need to recognize that. So when the, the it start when the Israelites started to write their history, they basically wrote their history the same way how the Greeks wrote their history. And what they did is they took stories and traditions, which the Greeks took the traditions from Sumer or wherever they took it from, and they did what they did. What we need to understand, family, is that the Bible, as it's written in the written form that it is, wasn't before 400 BC. There's no records of a Torah, a Pentateuch, a Bible in some form at all. You had nobody's re 
Nobody's remembering 23,145 verses. No human being can do that. So get that out. Oh, what about oral tradition? Yes, there was oral tradition and stories before 400 BC. But as far as our written history, it was not developed yet. And the truth of the matter is, you're going to see in the next couple of weeks when I play Jacob, um, what's his name? This guy. Let me let me put this on the screen real quick. You could keep that up. You could keep that up. No, what I was going to say is you can see in the picture who that is. And I, I, I did that on purpose so people can see this isn't there's not discrimination when it comes to scholarship and becoming archaeologists. It doesn't matter what your skin color is, your nationality or any of that. You know, you can become an archaeologist. And that's a black woman right there, African-American woman. Mm -hmm. Hey, by the way, this is my daughter's mm -hmm. book, Shanika Cuthbert, Poems to My Younger Self. Y'all could grab it on Amazon. All right. Um, this is the book that I'm telling y'all about. Y'all got to get this book right here. Why the Bible Began, An Alternative History of Scriptures, Scripture and Its Origins by Jacob L. Wright. Dr. Jacob L. Wright from Emory University actually it interviewed him. Um, he's one of the most brilliant scholars I've ever come across in my lifetime. This dude is a beast. He's mm. no joke. All right. Um, also, um, who else I need to, who else got a book? Somebody else got a book. Somebody got a book I need to promote up here. Also, my, my brother, Bruce Haynes, the Jews of African descent in America. Bruce C. Haynes. I urge everyone to get that book. And of course, copy your boy's book. Misconceptions and Misinformation by the Black Hebrew Israelites, Volume 1. After you read my book, you're going to get a better understanding of the biblical text. All right? All right, biblical DNA, what else you want to talk about, brother, before you get out of here? Um, Anything you want me to cover? Because I got a lot of, like, we didn't go over any of the documents I wanted to go over. But I did send them to you, so you can put it in the link mm -hmm. or in the description for all the links. And if anybody else wants any other um, links, I can just come at like just just let me know. Just come and ask me. I can pretty much. And you don't have access to any of these um these um like subscription. I can get. I can. I have college access. I have university access to these websites. So I can. I can send you the article if they're not free on ResearchGate because ResearchGate. A lot of these authors, they they um they put it on ResearchGate for people that don't have access to these articles, you know, for them to be able to download it and read it. So ResearchGate is definitely a go to for those that don't have um credentials or don't feel like paying money, which I don't blame you at us. It's expensive in the world we live in is very expensive. Everything's expensive. So I completely understand. But I got no problem of sending you a specific article regarding anything we I, I talked about today. All right, cool. Mm. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um as far as as far as folks, African Americans and people from the slave trade being um ain't uh, connected to ancient israelites i have not seen any evidence of this uh and i'm not even being biased have you seen any evidence biblical dna of african americans being the people from that time period the ancient canaanites ancient israelites on uh, the people mm -hmm. that live in that region have you come across anything that that has you leaning towards that direction no okay, okay. no not not at all um I, there's I there's a faith i think it's purely faith but go ahead there's the paper on um, the peopling of the last green Sahara revealed by high coverage um, resequencing of trans Saharan um, patrilineals. I was reading just, that earlier. Yeah, and I was gonna just bring this one up real quick. I'm gonna share my screen because um, it it mentions a little quote. Well, it mentions something about the ancient Egyptians, and it's the sample. It's the samples back from 2017. This is the paper right here. The peopling of the last Green Sahara revealed by high coverage um, resequencing of trans-Saharan uh, patrilineages. All right, so ancient Egyptians. Yeah. So it's talking about the, the DNA that's been found. So they're basically saying that there's evidence when the Sahara was still green, there's evidence of sub-Saharan African of an admixture there before it became what we know now. 
and is basically saying that um it wasn't from the maternal side but it was on the paternal side but at the same time when they did the ancient samples of the three ancient egyptians and remember it wasn't just three ancient egyptians it was actually 90 if i'm not mistaken it was like 90 something um this is a great paper right here that goes over all of this let me see how many samples there were. Just, I don't remember how many there were. Come on. Garfield, do you remember how many paper um, samples they had? I think um, it was like 90 something. 90 something, mostly female. Those were, those were females. So you're speaking about from the female perspective. Mm -hmm, but there's more samples than that, too. Um, 50, but it's like 90, mm -hmm. and they only that's what it was. Okay, do three males, I think, eventually. That's why people was mad about it. But the truth of the matter is, this search is talking about centrally the woman from that specific region. Mm -hmm. but, um, they did another one in 2000, was it 22 or 21? But that one has not been printed officially or peer reviewed. But it pretty yeah. much more areas, they went to more areas in Egypt. Mm -hmm. and what happened is the results were the same the women are not these uh, these women in in egypt they are not quote unquote african women they're not <laughs> in the in the earth in the ancient time periods all these women that they have in egypt were not what you call sub-saharan african or even even they don't they don't even show a lot of north i'm not even sure about the north african affinities but i'm gonna tell you this though they showed a lot of european connection they showed a lot of European European connection and that stuff. Mm -hmm. Isn't yeah. it true that mostly Berber women are mostly descended from women outside of Africa in general? Uh, I'm not I'm not sure about that. I'm I'm read I'm read up on that. You said um well like West Asian? Yeah, like West Asian and like you know, Southern yeah. European when it comes yeah, well, to Berber women. I, yeah, it is interesting. They carry a lot of H, and a lot of um, Jews carry H also. Which, when um, Ashkenazi Jews or any other Jew, when they do their twenty three and Me, it actually shows them that it'll show them like a Amaziah woman, and they're saying that they carried you know this ancient mtDNA of H, which is carried by North Africans and whatnot. So yes. But this is, um, it's in here somewhere. Let me see. Let's see. This is a good one right here for, for people that have not read it. Pretty much, there, there's a lot of coverage of ancient DNA that's supposed to come out in, um, from Egypt. This was back in um, 2021. So a ninth international, um, what is this, symposium? of biomedical or molecular archaeology yeah mm -hmm. archaeology and it was done in france but it's it's so weird that a lot of these studies never was published um i've been trying to find them but they're not i don't know where they're at they're just not here and so this is this this is the um right here this is an important one too because it basically confirmed what they found in Ab abasir el Melech. Mm -hmm. and i don't know where where the study is to confirm this we can read this one real quick egypt represents an ideal location for genetic studies on population migration and admixture due to its geographic location and rich history however there are only a few reliable genetic studies on ancient egyptian samples now see that's important right there because you got Ram ramesses the third tutankhamen um yo ya akhenaten those samples were available in 2021 how come they're saying we have a few reliable genetic studies on ancient egyptian samples and the ones that they're saying that's reliable come from this what this site in a previous study we assessed the genetic history of a single site abasur el melech from um 1388 bce to 426 ce we now focus on widening the, ge the geographic scope to give a general overview of the population genetic background. 
focusing on mitochondrial haplogroups present among the whole Egyptian Nile River Valley. We collected 81 tooth, hair, bone, and soft tissue samples from 14 mummies and 17 skeletal remains. The samples span approximately 4,000 years of Egyptian history and originate from six different excavation sites covering the whole length of the Egyptian Nile River Valley. NGS, which is your next generation sequencing, based ancient DNA eight were applied to reconstruct 18 high quality mitochondrial genomes from 10 different individuals. The determined uh, mitochondrial haplogroups match the results from our Absir El Melech study. Our resort, uh, re results indicate very low rates of modern DNA contamination, independent of the tissue type. Although authentic ancient DNA was recovered from different tissues, a reliable recovery was best um, achieved using teeth or petrous bone material. How, moreover, the rate for successful ancient DNA retrieval between Egyptian mummies and skeletal remains did not differ, differ significantly. Our study provides um, pre preliminary. preliminary insights into population history across different regions and compares tissue-specific DNA preservation for, DNA, uh, for mummies and skeletal remains from the Egyptian Nile River Valley. There's there's more on this um yeah in this what, too. That, that's pretty much the you see what happened is a lot of people throw out the 2017 study mm -hmm, right? exactly they, they want to throw out the male lineage which I don't I, I think using three samples to come up with a whole conclusion from the New Kingdom all the way up to um to before the the, the Arab invasion is 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 too much I think using three samples for that is bad but they had 90 samples for females that's a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you have 90 samples from the new kingdom to them, you have an idea of the woman. I keep telling people it's not the, it's not the greatest the greatest sample when it comes to um, men. But when it comes to the females, we know exactly who they were. And then this study now, which they, which was at that at that um present that that um that that whatever they were doing in 2021, that study confirms this and tell us even more because mm -hmm. they have four areas that they spread it across. So people not even understanding that. People talk about, oh, they're just, they just using three samples from the men. We're not talking about the men. This is why I keep telling Brother Ankh and others, the 2017 study from Schumann is not good for men because it's only three samples. But they yeah. got tiny samples for the female. That's right. more than enough samples you need. And then you mm -hmm. have another study now showing from pre-dynastic time coming down all the way down that agrees with the 2017 study and see yeah. these are these are the empty dnas that brother garfield's talking about right here this is on y full for the ancient samples out that, that was found in that paper and we see the three l3s right there so if you're basically saying no this paper doesn't is not true well you're discrediting these two right there also yep and 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 then let me ask you this for the woman for the woman that 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 in that thing what are what are the markers that they have what are they what do they have the woman the female so they have a good portion of um m m1a when i saw that it's pretty much found amongst um cachetic speakers um it's 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 so basically m1a did a back migration into africa um from west asia and so that sample, I believe, was also found in the epipolitic um, Iberian Merusian samples. And it was saying that, you know, the sample um, is common among sub-Saharan Africans because um, the East Africans, Ethiopians and whatnot, I believe they carry this mtDNA, if I'm not mistaken. But we, what we see is a whole variety, especially H. There, we talked about H earlier. There you go. A lot of R too. Yeah, I think I think with the the new studies that you find, you're gonna find them getting samples more and more, and they're working on it now. And by the time they're done, the Y markers are gonna be showing um um 
not E1B1A. If you notice, there's nobody finding any samples with E1B outside of Ramesses III. And for those who are late to the show, the the with the what do you call it the with, with at predictor yeah. with yeah. At the predictor, we yeah. use somebody who's in the dagger squad. They had a marker A when they did, they did the test and they put their samples in the in the with at the predictor. They came out as a European I. It shows you there's something wrong with that predictor. So what the, what the people who did the test are doing, they're going to test over Ramesses III and I guess Pentawar, the other sample, mm. the unknown person that they have. And they're also going to test over the R1B samples in the 18th dynasty. So once those testing are done, then you can go and use them instead of we trying to use E1B1A and say we are connected because Hebrew Israelites are using E1B1A. And that same sample that they think is E1B1A, the Israelites are using it, so the so-called Israelites, mm -hmm. and the um the African Americans to say that they are connected to Egyptians. Yeah. There's so a lot what, of tea. Look at that. A lot of teas. Look at that. And where's <laughs> that from, brother? Where's the tea from? Let's go ahead and look at it. Let's see. The tea I pull it up. Mm. Can't pay for this information, y'all. Y'all getting it for free. Y'all can't pay for this. Look where they're scattered to today. Tunisia, Italy, Iran, Turkey, Poland. They're scattered everywhere. Israel. So they're not they're not Saudi in Africa. Arabia. Why are they not in Africa? Yemen. Hold up now. Let's see. I didn't want to skip. There is a that's the ancient sample right there. From Egypt. Mm-hmm. Let's go back. Because mm -hmm. they probably have my T2. So let's and see. By the way, too, why do we feel that every culture, when we're having a DNA conversation, that every culture turn over? Like the people used to live there, they don't live, there. They, they don't have no descendants that go back that far. They, it must have remnants of the people. It's, it's like 70% mm. of the people is still there. Some are mixed, they're intermixed with people from other cultures, are mixed with, and then, and then the Arab invasion. I'm going to do a whole show on the Arab invasion, a whole show on it. People think that because of what happened in America. Yeah. And see, I have matches from everywhere. I mean, I try to tell people like my matches look like the populations they live in. So if they live in um, Kyrgyzstan, they look like the people from Kyrgyzstan. If they're in um, the Caucasus, Armenia or Georgia, that's what they look like. If they're in Italy, they look like that. So look at look at this. Look at this foolishness right here. I'm not using E1B1A to say Israelites. You're saying Egyptians can't be black. I said they can't be white, they can't be black. I'm not using none of that terminology to refer to anybody in the past. That's a Western world mindset. That's a slave master mindset. That's a white supremacy mindset. I cannot use what's being applied by the slave master and by a race by racialized terms, I can't apply it back to them because that would be anachronistic. It's not mm. being smart. So we will say that these people were light skinned to dark brown. We're light brown to dark brown. Same thing for the Israelites, same thing for the Egyptians. They had different phenotypes. They didn't have to look a certain way. They had different phenotypes. It's just, it's just a reality. It's, it's mm. a reality. If you, if you look at the fourth kingdom, the old kingdom in the fourth dynasty, you're going to look at those people and say, oh, they ain't, they don't, that, that ain't us. Why? Why would you say that? Because they don't look like the average African-American. You see, you're trying to, you're trying to make everybody in Africa you because we use the term Africa loosely because it has a meaning today that it never had back, that, back then. But what happened is now is they're defining these people and say, hey, you know what? They're Africans. And it kind of put us in a paradigm because we're using the term African loosely in a general sense today. Why are we using it for back then? But because it's a continent and they're trying to have to try to bridge a gap so everybody could agree on something, they say, hey, these people are African. Yep. Like West Africans look different from Horners. They look different from Nilotes. They look different from North Africans or Khoisan people. All right. So what's what's on this, your screen is the the supplementary material from. Give me one second. I'm trying to see. All right. So this is the supplementary material that's found in um, the genetic history of the Southern Ark a bridge between West Asia and Europe. This was a, um, 
a research that was published back in 2022 at the I think it was towards like the end of summer or something like that. But basically, they broke down the ancient DNA these samples carried from the Neolithic time, and they also gave you the eye color, hair color, um, and skin pigmentation, the Y DNA. And if you go onto um, the other um, Excel spreadsheet, it gives you the MT DNA also. But I wanted to show something real quick as far as skin pigmentation. This is a Israel um, Neolithic B sample right here. Can y'all see it good? Or you need me to zoom in? You good? You good? Let me zoom in a little, just a little bit. There we go. So as we can see, this individual from um, Israel pre-pottery Neolithic B had uh, intermediate skin pigmentation. So those saying the oh no, you know, tan people, those people in the Levant, they they, they newbies, they just got there. No. Intermediate skin pigmentation has been there um, since the Neolithic. That's what people need to understand. And you can't base like a haplogroup group off of uh, DNA, like Y DNA and whatnot. So, so you can see these samples, these Canaanite samples, right? What, what do we see? Some of them belong to E1B1B. Some of them belong to J1. Some of them belong to R1B. Look, look at their skin pigmentation. You can't judge... Um, can't judge these lineages based off of skin pigmentation because some of them was dark, some were dark to black, some of them were dark, some of them mm -hmm. were intermediate. Look at this, intermediate. That's the it. That's the sample um, that will be closely genetically similar to um, the Israelites. That. Send us this. I want to see this. Uh, yeah, I got you. It's in um, Brother Garfield. He's gonna put it in the description. I sent him an email. And he'll put everything in the description. But yeah, I'll send it to you directly. I got your email. Yeah, that, so. that makes a lot of sense when you have people with J with dark skin. And mm -hmm. People want to focus yeah. on the dark skin element instead of the lineage. The lineage Absolutely. is important. Like the limba, right? We know that the limba, they carry J, a lot of J1. Um, um, I think it's J1P58, but not the extended J1P58, like the, the Cohen, like the Ash, like the Jewish Cohen. Give me a time off for one second. Let me address this comment right here. So if, if Ramesses was E1B1A, if Ramesses wasn't E1B1A, he was an E. So if he's not E1B1A, who said he has to be an E? I guess you're not listening to the show. Mm -hmm. Show the example of somebody who had an A haplogroup, and when they put them in the wit athi predictor, they came out as I, as a European. Right. So we're trying to say that we don't know what Ramesses the third is. This is why it has to be retested using another whole different system that's more modern or mm -hmm. more that applies to all haplogroups, so that we could use it and say, "Hey, what group is he really from?" That's why we're doing it. That's why they are doing it. The experts. Just because he's not E one B one A doesn't mean he's necessarily going to be. E. All right, my brother, Mister Seven O Seven. Oh man. Well, anyway, continue, my brother. Yeah, so that's a here's a perfect another perfect example. This is a Middle Bronze Age um, Canaanite sample, and you see intermediate skin pigmentation. So his skin pigmentation differed differed from or was different from these ones. Now, would they looked at each other like, "Yeah, you you aren't you ain't part of our culture"? No, they weren't discriminating against each other like that. People need to get away from all that. It's nonsense. Hey, so biblical. Wait, if y'all did a thought experiment earlier before I came in here, huh? Y'all did yeah? a, a y'all did an experiment earlier with with athletes before I came in here. Yeah, we did it to somebody on Dagger Squad. They're not not specifically theirs, but we did. I did somebody on um from African um family tree DNA from Ethiopia who belonged to A M thirty two. Time out, time out, time out. Here, we, here out, we go. Time out, time out, time out. But then my brother again comes back again. I don't think you were listening. They're going to retest the R's too from the 18th dynasty. You got to listen. You got to learn to listen, Mr. 1707. You got to listen. We said it last week and we said it this week. I said they got to test the R's too. You got to learn to listen, man. This is why you guys believe that the nonsense y'all believe. You don't listen. All right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, continue, brothers. Yeah, 
look at there. These Canaanites from Lebanon, these middle Bronze Age samples with intermediate skin pigmentation. And so, like I said, you can't really judge. <laughs> you can't really judge skin color and determine a Y chromosome or the, even their admixture. Because we also, can, if you slide over to the left, these are the ancient admixture of these samples. And what we see is majority of them have a, a Neolithic Levantine component and a Caucasus Hunter component, and also an Anatolian component. Just like that paper about the 90% um, of the Lebanese um, are descendants of the Canaanites. That's exactly what it said. That's also this is also what it said in that Israelite um, paper. The you know when they found the Israelite sample from Kiryat Yerim says the same thing. It's saying the same thing as this. Also, I can show y'all real quick about the. Here we go. These samples right here. These two samples are uh, Lebanese Egyptians. So their ancestry came from um, Egypt, and they were different from the other studies from the uh, SFI 34, 35, 36, 39, 42, 45, I believe, and 47, 40, um, and 50. They were different. Now these samples were were Egyptian, um, Lebanese, whatever. That's how they're labeled Egyptian. They were Egyptian, and in these samples we can see one of them have intermediate skin pigmentation, while the other one has dark skin pigmentation. Just saying. And we see that majority of their admixture also was um, Neolithic Levantine. Majority was Neolithic Levantine with the admixture of Caucasus hunter gatherer. And this one had Eastern hunter gatherer in them. So very minimum. So it was 62%. That's 57%. That's 35%. That's 40%. You got anything else, Garfield? I think that's a wrap. That that article that you showed about the Green Sahara. Mm hmm But that yeah. shows that shows the lineage of African Americans present in the Sahara during like okay, so from what I, when I read that, it said that the Sahara continued its its period of becoming arid up until about what five thousand years ago, to about three thousand BC. What would you say? Give me a second. Let me go to it. And the reason I'm asking is because if you have that E one B one A lineage uh, along with A and R and E one B one B. That would mean that lineage is present and active in the Sahara during the time period of dynastic Egypt, like the Old Kingdom. Elsewhere. So what were you asking? What were you saying? I'm sorry. I'm asking regarding the, okay, so in this in that region of the sahara they found mm -hmm. they focus on four haplogroups e1 b1a is one of them right yeah a i believe it was a m r and e1 b1b yeah 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 e e m78 yeah v32 so, so when they do they did a calculation on four ancient specimens you know to coalesce the time period of like the uh mutations or whatever to trace them backwards and they're saying some of that, some of those markers are present up to towards the end of the desertification of the Sahara, which is like mm -hmm. five, maybe about five thousand years ago. If I'm interpreting that correctly, that would be three thousand BC, which mm -hmm. is roughly still what the old kingdom of Egypt. So what I'm saying is the ancestors of African Amer Americans are present, active in the Sahara. Other than being in Egypt, they they're over in another place mostly, active in the Sahara. Still. Yeah, and and that's why we need more samples, um, from you know Northeast Africa, from Sub-Saharan Africa. We need more samples. 
more population samples. You got to check them caves, man, because yeah, it's, it's hard to find a, them ancient E one B one A's, man. It's just the 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 land, the area, it's not preserving well. Mm hmm. Well, let me go ahead and read this real quick. It says, "Moreover, a few a few male slaves left descendants, whereas female slaves were imported in northern Africa as household servants and as concubines, and their offspring were born free, thus contributing to the local gene pool." Thus, we suggest that the Arab slave trade mainly contributed to the mtDNA and autosomal gene pool of present-day Northern Africans, whereas the paternal gene pool was mainly shaped by more ancient events. This hypothesis is in line with genome-wide data obtained from three ancient Egyptian mummies dated between 2.5 and 2 KYA, showing a not... Um, which, what is this? An, um, ne negligible. negligible. Yeah, ancient sub-Saharan component. So they're saying that they're getting their sub-Saharan component from the women mm -hmm. being up there. Okay, so yeah, they small, were taking a right? lot of black women. Mm -hmm. But that was more modern, modern times. That's talking about during the... see how they came to that conclusion, though. Exactly, because there's no ancient samples that I know of that that carry R E one B one A in North Africa. No, you're talking about the woman. No, no, they're saying that based on the let's, let's, based on the let's mummies. Think, let's think logically. Mm -hmm. Usually, when a culture takes over, right? Usually, you bring in men in because the men are the fighters or the army members. So the yeah. men men normally go in that area and sleep with the local woman. So I'm trying to figure out why would they draw the conclusion. I got to go back and look at no, that. No, no, you got to read that article because it's talking about when the Sahara was there, there were mm -hmm. four lineages. The, the When it became yeah. arid, they spread. Most of the E1B1A started going sub-Saharan. It's like maybe two markers that's present still in northern Africa, but that's largely become dominant by J and E1B1B. When yeah. they're talking about the females, they say in the Arab slave trade, and it looks like they're comparing it to three mummies that had black female uh, mitochondrial DNA. Yeah. You know so what's, the fathers you know were probably still North Africa. You know what's weird? The Arabs and the Egyptians did team up, and they did work out a deal to enslave the night the um the new the so-called Nubians. Right here. Yeah. So this is what it's talking about right here this is the um the em2 what um fortune is talking about that's the smp right here um they're saying that they've been there seven thousand falls within the last green sahara um period seems to have been involved in another sahelian uh, movement being present at high frequencies among different um is that flow b groups flow b groups flow b groups i don't know that's the full, I believe. Yeah, full B. Ah, I guess full. Uh, interestingly, the geographic distribution of this clay perfectly traces the uh, flu, full lob migration from Western Africa, where this haplogroup is also common in other ethnic groups, um, to Central Sahel, where the same haplogroup is only found among full lob populations. But yeah, I don't. From what I know, that there there's no ancient um, E one B one A found in North Africa. Not right now. There's no present day samples. So you're telling me all these people who are E one B one A. So we cross from Egypt, we cross from Israel, <laughs> and we have left no samples of traveling across. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> that shit is crazy. That's Wait, what people want to claim. <laughs> Hold that's on. What, that's what people want to claim. They they did all of that, and there's no evidence. Go to biblical. Go to results where it says phylogenetic tree. If you can go to results, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna see if you can scroll down to where they talk about the topology. Let's see. Scroll down. You said topology. Yeah, it's under it's under results, but then you go. Wait, you said typology? Okay, so go to go when you under results, it's gonna say follow genetic tree. Yeah. Scroll down a bit. Keep going. Keep going. It's gonna it's gonna talk about the topology of A first. 
Okay. You talking right? about okay, right that's here? A. Now, 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 read it when it says the topology of. Okay, EM2. topology. Okay, the read topology. EM2. Yeah, the topology of E dash M two is uh, characterized by a main mal or multi fortation. Yeah, fortication downstream to branch seventy one, dating back to the beginning of the last Green Sahara ten point fifty three kya and including all the deep sequence samples except one branch. 70 consistent with the tree reported in phase three of the 1000 genomes project. However, we found 11 subclades branches 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, uh, 79, 81, 82, 95, 98, and 99, which shares share no markers with the 262 E M2 chromosome analyzed by Posnick and colleagues. It is worth noting that the branches 72 and 81 are two deep sister lineages within the E-M2 main um, multi, what's the meaning of this word real quick? Having, okay, so having or fulfilling several functions. Okay, multiplication. All right, and that's both, biblical. Yeah, yeah. I want you to scroll down some more. Okay. Scroll down some more. And, and and it's gonna be under the you're gonna see like a a figure figure four. Figure okay. four. Yeah, right there. Go back up. Go back up. Go back up. Where at? this? Right here. Mm -hmm. Now this is the numbers it's talking about where they were found the um from the E dash M two correct. And this and I want you to I want you to read this part under that. So scroll down a, a bit. Raphael wanted you to see that, but scroll down a little part? bit more. I'm gonna tell you exactly. Okay. Stop, gonna, stop, 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 it is stop, no, stop, stop right there. Stop right there. It's gonna go back, right back here. Go back up. Go back up a little bit. Okay. Where stop. are we at? Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. I want to go ahead and read it. We also included eight admixed populations from America, whose genetic oh. variation has been shaped by the transatlantic slave trade from the 15th centuries. To the 19th centuries to be used as positive control to investigate the effects of other recent historical events such as the Arab slave trade from the 7th to the 19th centuries, which involved the forced movement of millions of sub-Saharan Africans towards North, Northern Africa. The genotyping results for A3-M13 confirm... Garfield, skip A. Skip A and go to E. It is known. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Scroll down a little bit, biblical. I'm sorry that I'm putting you all over the place. No, nah, it is. Okay, right there. There. I knew it was this one. <laughs> that right there. Read that. It is where known. You, where you want them to stop at, though, stop, real stop, quick? Stop, stop right there. Stop right there. Okay. It is known that the geographic distribution of EM2 in sub Saharan Africa has been heavily influenced by the recent Bantu expansion. And this is mirrored by the high frequencies of several EM2 subclads among the Bantu people, in particular, E. U290 and EU174. However, we found clues as to the role of the last Green Sahara considering the phylogeography of the EM2 subclads in North Africa, Northern Africa. The coilless age of the lineages harboring Northern and Sub-Saharan chromosomes predates the onset of the arid conditions falling between 11.03 KYA. The Years ago, one of the most recent clades harboring a relevant portion of Northern African samples during the last Green Sahara. Excuse me. So stop right I there. Stop sample. right there. So that that tells you that there's an EM2 that's been in the Sahara between eleven thousand and four point forty nine thousand years ago. So that mm -hmm. covers early Egypt and up to that shit. That's two thousand uh, BC. That's that's past pre dynastic Egypt. That's past the old. That's still in the old kingdom, right? And it says, after this time frame, we observed clades restricted to the north or to the south of the Sahara. In this context, although the large majority of the geographically restricted lineages come from sub-Saharan regions, we also found two northern African-specific clades, namely EB5001 and EB4990. Mm -hmm. EB5001 has only been found in Egypt and is one of the sister clades within EM4727. So that's the EM2 that's in Egypt. And it coalesced 3.88 thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it says the other hold one on, is hold the Moroccan. Hold on, hold on. Say it again. That EM2 what? EM2 5001 has only been found in Egypt. This is like a, a like a, a specific EM2, right? It's is only that found EM2 in that's in African Americans. No, I don't know. No, no, it's, Let, a, it's give like me a, a, a rare one. Here we go. Let's go to Y full. There's an, another website I can show y'all also. Um, it's S and P Tracker. It'll show you exactly where this this lineage um branched I've been off. Been this for years, and people don't want to listen to me. The EM two that they found in early Egypt is not the same EM two that's in African American right. right. people in the Western. But there's the e But those two are the exceptions for when people say none was in North Africa or whatever, or something like that. Aye, aye. Is it gonna work? Okay, this thing is taking a hot minute. All right. So this is saying during the Bronze Age, it came up. Y'all there? Yeah, go ahead, Biblical. That's Paleolithic, though. Mm-hmm. And he had the Bronze Age, that's, that's Neolithic. You have Neolithic and um, Paleolithic. So I don't and know what sample. That blue, that blue is the Neolithic one, Neolithic blue. Wait, this one? Or this oh, this one is okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's um Neolithic. So you want the clay because it's E B five thousand one. There's two of them actually, five thousand one and E B four nine ninety. You talking about this one? Which one? Okay, uh let me see where you at. Yeah, up yep, E V five thousand and one. Okay. <clears throat> that's the one only found in Egypt. The other one is uh, Morocco. But I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know of these ancient. These are found in ancient samples. I don't think so. So I don't know where they where they got that from. I think they found it in this study. Modern, yeah, it's above, the modern populations. Um, yeah, yeah, but they that was their thing. They were saying if they're clustered mm -hmm. and lingering around north in the sub-Saharan, that they're they they are like postulating that these are the relics yeah. of who were in the Sahara, so they found the person. Right. Yeah, modern probably. I'm gonna look on family tree or why full, and then I'm gonna try family tree DNA and see what it pulls up. There we go. See what samples. So they're saying that this one um, mutated 10,600 years ago. So that's a Neolithic period. And they've got nobody, nobody with um, their locations on this. Let me try, try family tree DNA. Mm hmm. Hmm. Is that it's found in populations from North Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. Okay. See, that's why this is unique to have for those that don't have a, a AI. Mm. And so for somebody like a Ramses, right? I'm not saying what it is or it or it isn't. He may not be R E M E M two. When I say R, I'm being facetious for African Americans, the mm -hmm. more than sixty percent. But he could be an older E, he could be this rare E, or he could be a non-E. So, yeah, they, they, they got to do some more conclusive testing. Yeah, I just keep it as I don't know. They need to do more testing, and I got the emails and the video to prove it. Exactly. So we can't <laughs> say definitively who is what. 
we can speculate all day, but we don't know. So yeah, you're right, biblical. Let's not <laughs> say anything. Yeah, just let them retest all those samples. Um, you know, it's sad that we got two samples because we had three technically males um, that are reliable, but one's actually contaminated, and that's actually an E one B one B sample. And that's not me just saying that. That comes from Dr. Ryak's lab. Um, the samples that's found on there, it says contam on it. So it's contaminated. And all of this is because we want to be Egyptians. Yeah. Hey, biblical DNA, listen, man. I think I want to make you an official Dagger Squad member, you know. I got I got to talk to the to the to the, the big shots. Hey, you know what? Um 93, you just read something that just blew everybody away, man. Cuz if you can prove that the the, the E1B1A or the EM2 that they have in Egypt, that could answer if Ramesses III is EM2. He could be a descendant from that that EM2 that we're talking about, which yeah. is not the same as African Americans EM2. If it's not the same what are we arguing about? That shit is crazy. We argue. Look, they're going to see E and jump the E. A lot of niggas want to be jump the E. I'm E1A. Look, they won't even tell you they specific clays. They'll just say, I'm E1A. <laughs> Hell no. Yep. And then they see that dark color like biblical show. It don't matter. He could be J like a motherfucker. And they want to be that. So, hey. Hey, real quick, can you um show my screen, Brother Garfield, real quick? I appreciate it. All right, so these are all the samples that um, me and Brother Garfield was talking about earlier that was found in this study. And this is the sample right here, this JK2888. This is the one that is considered to be contaminated right here, this one right here. And I actually have the contamination Excel spreadsheet right here. This one. So right there. These are the samples right there. So earlier, like when I'm showing the Y full, if, if anybody's question these samples are correct for the mtdna they are absolutely are because this is from the supplementary material let me see if i can zoom in real quick and yeah and pretty much with fortune what you're talking about is that s p would long branch off from other E1B1A carriers. So if that sample were to be found in ancient um, North African populations, even in, even in um, Northeast Africa, from Nubia to Egypt, to any of the Northeast Africans, um, then it would definitely show an admixture. So they basically would have to find the admixture for that sample and the specific S and P that was found, tracing back to that admixture. If you catch what I'm saying. Okay. Wanted to do something real quick. Wanted to find that sample in Family Tree DNA because Family Tree DNA, for those that don't know, they have a wide DNA tree. And for those that has tested on there, it'll come up. So the specific branch, I got it up now. Let me share my screen. Here it goes. Bam. All right, shared screen. See, this sample is not coming up for some reason. Dang. What about that EV? Uh, So nobody in Family Tree DNA has tested positive for these S and P's for these branches. Yeah, I think that's a very rare mm -hmm. branch. Yeah.
Can you find out real quick what's the what, what did it fall underneath? I read it earlier. I forgot. So these are the oh, branches okay. I'm it's talking a, about. Okay. So this is go ahead. Okay, so so was it five thousand? Let me go back up. Five thousand one. Mm, yeah. No, that's that's the what branch did that come from? Because it came. I read it earlier, but I don't remember it's where e, it was. Em forty seven twenty seven. Em. 47, 27. 27. Yeah, yep. it's not that one. It's a, it's one I read earlier. It came from one of these earlier that I read. This is for example. This is what I'm talking about. See, you, we have people that's carrying this branch. That's what I, if I can find out what branch I read earlier, earlier that these samples were underneath, that's when I can find out. But I think I got an idea. Okay, give me a second. Yeah. I got an idea. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about, 5,001. I got a good idea. That's the sample I'm going to use. Right there. See, this one is found through Saudi Arabia, um, United Arab Emirates, and Kuwait. Okay. Here we go. So nobody has, wow. I'm assuming they have this one private. Let me see. Here we go. Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's, 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 it's a sister clay within that uh, 4727. Mm -hmm. They said it's only found in Egypt, so it's probably something extremely rare let me see this one real quick why fool it's just like when i read last week when they found somebody with um the e-p2 same thing and it was found in yemen if i'm not mistaken but that doesn't mean everybody carries that one that belongs to, you know, E1B1 or E1B1B or E1B1A. Hmm. Let me see. So that's EM78. So this one's an EM78 one. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm probably gonna log off. Yeah, you, you, you definitely sound like you need you, you need to get you some rest, my guy. <laughs> Are you reading too many E one B one D one he one? <laughs> yeah, when you see all this data and see that thing is, I don't know with Brother Garfield. He don't he don't let you know anything. He'll let you know at the last minute if he's gonna have you on. So I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I'm waiting, you know, if we're gonna do this or not. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Garfield. Hey, yeah, that's that E carrier talk from one E carrier to another. All right. All right. Well, I, I then if you're done, then um, I'm done. I just got. I'm glad we got a chance to discuss the Green Sahara article because, yeah, I've been, yeah, I've been told to really get into that article for a long time, and I found it interesting. No, the only reason why I wanted to because it mentioned the three ancient Egyptian, and so basically this video was supposed to go over the ancient Egyptians and the Canaanites, modern or ancient and pot and modern. Um, populations, you know, which people they would um, genetically cluster with. And so I remember when I read this uh, um, two years ago that I remember it had something about it. So I wanted to, 
you know, address it to, sh you know, show that it's saying, you know, hey, these people had, you know, they lack sub-Saharan African um, admixture, but there is an ancient component of E1B1A. That doesn't mean all of E1B1A is found in um, North Africa, but before the Green Sahara or, you know, during the Green Sahara. Uh, well, uh, to be continued, um, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, Garfield, I like this show. Congratulations. <laughs> or, um, his daughter got a book out. Um, I don't know if he's going to put awesome. it up, but check it out. Biblical DNA. You writing the book, man? Yeah, I have to get my master's degree first now. <laughs> I have to focus on that. I want to get my master's degree and become a data scientist. That's my, my whole goal. That's the book right there. We have Miss Shanika Cuthbert, Poems to My Younger Self. That's on Amazon. Ten bucks. Go and grab it. All right. Hey, family, we out of here, man. I want to say peace and love. Thank you, my brother, peace. for taking the time out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you, did, you did a beautiful job. Man. A beautiful You're welcome. Job. Hate us going hate, but I recognize that article about the EM2 the EM from way back. Which article was that? That's the Green Sahara, um, I believe. Oh, people of the Green Sahara. So that yeah. actually explains where the people who started Egypt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Earth well. Populations. Some of them well, might no. Like, it no. talks it talks about the who who they postulate inhabited the Sahara, right? So there's four lineages that still linger above in northern Africa and in mm -hmm. southern Africa and they coalesce into a population that would have been living there while it was still drying up. And those lineages include E one B one A, E one B one B a form of that, or I think it's V eighty eight. And uh, A3, I believe it's haplogroup A3B, AM31. So those are the lineages that was living in the Sahara. And the time period is important for them when you look at the time period. Because it shows that they were there while before, during, and maybe a little bit after dynastic Egypt. The people who are looking for what their ancestors or people like them were doing, they were doing their thing in the Sahara. So that's it's it. it's on the seventh link down in the email that I sent you, Garfield. It's, mm -hmm. it's the okay. seventh link down. So yeah, if y'all want to do a whole video dedicated to um, you know, ancient DNA from Africa, that'd be perfect. That's I'd something love that. we and we actually got to read these articles now. We can't be just sitting here and having some some <laughs> Israelites. One of the Israelites <laughs> come on the channel and cause a fuss. Yeah, another thing too. I think we need to start taking serious those maternal lineages. Cause I know we we see ourselves patrilineal, but mm -hmm. hey, the, nah. our, 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 our women matter too, and they were they were migrating too, and you'll find yep. them. Absolutely. That's why if you want to discredit that um, Absor El Melek paper, you're discrediting those two L threes in there also. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. <laughs> All right, brothers. Uh, we out right. here. Peace and love, Peace. Man. Peace. Peace. Hey, Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Garfield, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Who y'all got tonight? Oh, man. You know, it's UConn. You got UConn, and the UConn is playing who again? Who they playing? Uh, they playing against the. Um, that's uh. Purdue, Purdue, Purdue. Yeah, Purdue. yeah, that big, that big Edie that big, dude. Yeah, Purdue. Big Indian looking, um, the Asian looking dude. All right. Yeah. All right. Peace and love, family. We out of here. One love, man. Thanks for watching. Support.